he set him up. Outnumbered and underrated, the British Lions achieved a mighty upset at Wembley. Now for Davis. Davis to the 20 metre line. Mullins is after him. Sensational try. The Aussies couldn't get into stride as they were cut down by the desperate defence of the home side. Turn it up. What about this Great Britain defence? Nothing short of sensational. Now one down in the series, it's a backs to the wall battle for the Kangaroos to retain the Ashes. Nine. Force change there, Graham Stedman has changes. Rod Wishart gets a start for them. I think that's a great move for Australia because he's been in great form. He's eight for Australia. He's taken over from Alan Langer. Langer is on the bench. Stewart's kicking game will come to the fore here today. But more, than, more importantly for Stewart, I think his running game. If you remember a few years ago, he, he ran 60 minutes spewing all morning apparently. Again, but uh, that's the way it goes. Feel a sense of deja vu of 1990? Well, it's the same thing, the same thing happened, but uh, there's not much I can do about it. Uh, you know, I've, I'm happy with the way I'm playing. I just got to, as I said before, just keep, you know, plugging away and hopefully get that jersey back one day. As a live wire 23 year old, Stewart experienced two extremes on league's learning curve in the 90 series. The first came with 10 minutes to go when one of his trademark passes was off target. But the man they call Sticky bounced back in the best way possible. Deep in injury time, Stewart made the bust which kept Australia in the series. Stewart throws the dummy. Now Ricky Stewart on his own. He's up to the halfway. He's waiting for Eddie Helson. He's got support. Eddie Helson with him. They get down to the digger. Up to the digger. He gets goals. Oh, what a try. What a try. What a run from Stewart. And what a try. I don't mind the, the line where... Uh, you know, no one wants to be involved in a, in a, uh, uh, a touring team where we uh, don't take the Ashes home with us. And uh, secondly, I suppose, where you know, there's pressure on myself, I have to play well. After the upset win at Wembley a fortnight ago, the Lions have a great chance of securing their first home series win over the Roos since 19... If they do and everyone puts the effort in, um, we've got a great chance of winning. We know the enormity of the task ahead of their first bit. Caught up. He looks amazingly relaxed, actually, Mal. He goes into his uh, as Jeff Carr and uh, his assistant manager lead the Kangaroos out. Behind Mal Meninga, who has been received as one of their own here on just about every occasion. Presentation. Yeah. But they've been unable to put the icing on the cake. And that man will lead the Kangaroos today in... the second test. Sean Edwards will be sitting in the grandstands as the two captains of profile. Philip Clark. Now please welcome the home side, fresh from that memorable eight. British crowd, the way they get involved so much in big sports events. You saw Graham Annesley shouting at the captains. He wasn't uh, doing it in an angry fashion. He was plenty at home. 44,000 of them, as a matter of fact. Across through Goulding, it goes for big Carl Harrison. 30 years of age. Plays it just beyond the 30-metre line. Jackson runs from dummy half to be brought down. Seven metres now from the halfway point. The kick is coming. Back for Stedman. A new face in the side. It's a big kick. Down to the Australian line. And now Mullen ring. They certainly weren't 10 metres out. There's the 10 metre line in front of him. Now the penalty. And there's Annesley ruling exactly what I was talking about. Well, you've just seen a sign of how far English rugby league has come on. The kick chase game, something that was never a great priority a decade ago. They now do it as well as any of the Australian sides. Unfortunately for them on that occasion, they were inside the 10 in the chase. But they had a lot of troops down there very quickly. Interesting that the markings, the line markings, have not been wiped out. The soccer line, and Annesley made a point of showing the Great Britain players where the rugby league 10 metre line is. It's very important. Now, Goulding involved in a punch-up. 
with the big Australian front rower. Yeah, Dean Pay. Gooling sprinted out of the line to put a, a heavy head on Pay. A penalty went to Australia because Gooling was never on side and he went on with it. Well, he's livid, Dean Pay. He's pointing in there. Bobby Goulding, as we pointed out, has always been a little bit of a wild character. And Dean Pay not impressed at all with the tackle put on him. There it is there. He threw a, a straight left that missed Pay, Goulding the right, and then it escalated. Pay ended up on his back, and I don't think that impressed him too much. Pretty vulnerable place to be. Well, this will just settle a few nerves down. There'll be plenty out there. That could be the best thing to happen to Dean Pay. He might settle him down now. Should be one of Australia's trump cards today. And then as he's doing plenty of talking now, we've got both captains there, both touchies. Now Goulding being called out as well. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see which way Annesley goes here. Goulding did initiate the problem, but Dean Pay did throw the first. And sometimes the retaliation is the one that is penalised, and that would be Pay. It does go Australia's way. Will Wishart have a kick? No, they're going for, for the line. Bobby Goulding then penalised for a high shot. And Stewart begging the kick for line. The ground saw him really in combination with Mal Meninga save the series in 1990. Wishart centres it just outside the 20 metre line. Steve Walters with that worrying strapping on his left knee. Bradley Clyde thumped into the ground. Walters now looking for the call. Gets decoy runners going left and right. And Dean Pay goes under a, a suspect tackle. It's away from Stewart and in the hands of Daly. Daly beats the tackle of Dennis Betts and takes it 11 metres out from the line. Australia in a very good attacking position. Steve Walters away for Stewart. Dummies right, runs left. Serves it up and puts it on the ground. Lack of communication between Stewart and Fittler. This is little Robinson coming away to the 20-metre line. And the sound of the whistle gives a penalty to Great Britain. Australia inside the 10, the penalty 31 metres out from their own line. Stedman finding it. Now the tap. To be taken quickly by the Englishman. Taken by Jackson. And there, inside the 10. And they'll probably take a shot from here. Well, that's great urgency shown there by Great Britain. Australia had their backs turned. They waltzed back in a line. And then when uh, they took the, uh, the quick tap there, they caught them out. I actually think they'll put off a little bit by the line markings also. They were back behind the next line that is punctuated. There you see the one on the right. They were back, but it's not 10 metres between those two lines. They are signalling a kick for goal here. Laurie Daly, the man who was penalised, but he had plenty of players... We were in the same position, but as Paul pointed out, great urgency. In a moment. A 2-0 in favour of Great Britain, a penalty to Goulding. They're on their 20-metre line, this is their fourth play. First set of six since the kick. And Harrison plays it for Jackson, who scampers two paces before giving it to Betts. Betts. 20 of metres before tackle by Fittler. Now they come back for Goulding to kick. Wishart dropping back. He'll bring it out. Mullins will be with him. Off the 10-metre line. And out of the soccer square. Wishart plays it inside the 20 and Renoff goes in for a run. And again Annersley. And a penalty goes to Australia. Against the Englishman for holding down in the tackle. Alex Murphy on the sidelines. A comment. We had a few questions down here about Mal Meninga being bitten, but also Lottie Daly actually got a, a smack in the eye and he looks as though he's uh, in a little bit of pain. And uh, I hope he's not too long having that note because uh, it's very, very important that he fires on all cylinders today. Thank you, Alex. As uh, Ian Roberts takes it ahead now. 30 metres out from the, uh, the Great Britain line, they lead 2-0. Lead the series 1-0 and they lead this 2-0 if you've just joined us. Fittler gets it down for Roberts. Roberts! Oh! Here's the captain! Meninga put down. Great tackle, Stedman. His front on defence might not be all that brilliant, but that time it was at its best. Now Daly around the back. He looks for Brad Clyde. Clyde tries to beat them with strength, but it's a penalty to Australia. 
Well, inside the 10 metres there, the Great Britain defence. Laurie Daly coming up quickly to take the tap. It was a very good tackle from Stedman. It was fortunate that he was close up behind his front line. It didn't allow Meninga to get too much momentum up. But straight away, the Aussies went wide and Clyde playing very wide this afternoon. Well, Meninga held the hand up and said, hang on a moment, fellas, enough of the quick taps. We're going for goals today. This is what happened. The markers were never directly behind one another and there were players inside the 10. But, interesting to know... Yilawarra Steeler. In fact, the first test representative from that, uh, that new club in the Winfield Cup. Here he comes, strikes it, and the flags are up! Wishart levels at 2-2. Now the Australian spectators, they get a chance to vent their happiness. That was a very important kick for Rod Wishart. Kickers like to strike their first one sweetly. That's exactly what Wishart did. As Paul pointed out, his confidence must be very high because he really is hitting the sweet spot more often than not. 98 points now on tour for Rod Wishart. That was his 39th goal. Great Britain restart, and Stedman's kick is deep and right down into the arms of Rod Wishart. And look at the tackle by Harrison. In fact, it was Powell. Clark involved as well. Clive. He of course, was sickened by that nasty high tackle in the first test, and we did miss Clyde. That's uh, seemingly gone unnoticed in the post-mortems from Wembley. Walters. Good run by Steve Walters. It's only seven metres off the halfway line. Glenn Lazarus is uh, just getting his boot back on as Stewart keeps it low and sends it down behind Offia. Stedman will bring it back, though. Offia not all that keen for, for extra labour. Oh, gee, Malman yeah. has gone in with a short arm, and I, I don't know about this. Right in front of the touch judge as well. This will be a penalty to Great Britain. Looked like a forearm as Stedman was on the ground. That's unlike Malman Inga. It's just an indication of how much is at stake here. It's a tube shot from Mal with the left elbow. And I think what Mal's played 14, 15 years, first one I've ever seen from him. So Meninga jogs back and watches the kick of Stedman sail over his left shoulder. They take a tap and Harrison comes up. Oh, Dean Pay led the way. And there it is again, the forearm of Meninga going down on the, the head of Stedman. This is joint now. Two points all at Old Trafford. As Jackson runs away. And a penalty. Again to Great Britain. And this time right in front, 32 metres out. Well, Graham Annesley obviously having trouble getting his message through. He wants a big 10 metres. He's not getting it. And it looks as though he's prepared to give penalties until he gets it. Quick play. The balls are catching both teams out. They're not actually getting back 10 metres before the ball is being played. So in their anxiety, they're coming up. And uh, such, uh, the penalties are being given. Goulding now will have another shot for goal. Yeah, I think Lee Jackson would have been a little bit happier if play had been called on. He, he got through the line, but that was because the Australian stopped. But Bradley Clyde was slow off the ground. Jackson saw that and took off, and he was going to make some good metres up the middle. But he'll be happy for this to go across to give his side the lead again. Is that the, they don't use sand here, is that right, Ray? Just looking down, it looks as though it's one of those devices that it's a mold, put the ball on. Yeah. If you like. It replaces the mound. And Bobby Goulding. One out of one so far, and two out of two. Great Britain leading four points to two. We're back in a moment. At Old Trafford, 4-2 Great Britain, two goals for Goulding, one for Wishart. The nine coverage of the Test Series, the second in the series. As Clark, the captain, runs into a great tack by Clyde. Coming over the top was Lazarus. Well, was there a knock-on? No, Annesley saw it and set off the feet. And here's a pass out the back from Powell. Great work from Harrison to Offia. Then for Hunt, and Hunt is put away. Excellent defence from Eddinghausen. Saw there was danger, rushed up and got to his man quickly as Offia throws the dummy from dummy half. Oh, oh. that's got to be a penalty. Deliberately thrown forward by Offia. Oh, he's a quarterback. So they'll take the kick for line. 
almost surely 48 meters out and there's the incident deliberately forward from off you poor old Lee Jackson said why me Eddinghausen just uh, wiping if you're wiping a bit of grease off he, he came in uh, and tackled one of the Great Britain players who had grease all over his knees just getting rid of that now before he gets back into the action that ground out there is quite greasy the players of course uh, wearing a lot of grease the Great Britain team but the ground in itself dampened by overnight rain as Eddinghausen comes off his wing, works with Stewart, then for Daly, now for Fittler, and then for Renoff. Renoff looks for an opening, and he's pulled down. This defence is good from Great Britain. That tackle was made by Connolly, and now it misfires, but Stewart is able to clean it up and tries to burrow through. 31 metres out, touched in play, six more for the Aussies. And with Roberts, it goes across for Pay. Here's a chance, they've got the numbers. They come across in sliding defence. Mullins gets it back. Maminga on for Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen for the corner, pulled down. Offier and Stedman make the tackle. But Great Britain are on their heels at the moment. It's with Ricky Stewart. Across for Brad Fittler. He tries to step, stands, offloads. Picked up by Dean Pay. Pay's at the 10 metre line. Now Lazarus, Lazarus. He comes back, looks for Mullins. Mullins runs decoy and it's a shepherd. Penalty Great Britain. Well, Australia came so close there. Mounting an attack there and in the end, Lazarus held the ball up just for one second too long. And the shepherd came. Here he comes here. Maybe he should have given it the first time there. Although it might have been forward, but there was the shepherd. An excellent oh. kick there from Great Britain. Finding touch on the halfway line. Harrison. Met by Daly and put away. The first sustained attack in the game. Weathered by Great Britain. So here they are now. Just inside the 30-metre line, Lee Jackson. Very good dummy half runner. Clark, a dummy half. Daly at first marker. They go to the right to Goulding. A test for Australia now in defence. And Goulding, 25 out, centre of the ground. Jackson, a dummy half. Great Britain stacking up a play. They're working for the play. Not this one, but probably the next, as Betts is tackled just inside the 20-metre line. There's Stedman looking for the ball, but it goes to Goulding on the blind. A little kick in behind the line, looks too strong. And uh, the Australians, oh gee, just nonchalantly watching it. Wishart and Mullins, they had a better view than we did. Our hearts went into our mouths, but uh, it's OK. We come back to the 20-metre line now for the restart, and uh, it's Brad Fittler coming across and putting the step on. Okay. Joint it is that brings him down. Maminga a dummy half. And there's one question that has definitely been answered in the opening stages of this first, uh, second test as Meninga burst through a tackle. There was some doubt about the fitness of Bradley Clyde after the knock he took at Wembley. He has been outstanding out here early. Good ball to Stewart, there's a chance. There is a chance as Renoff finds a bit of open space and it's closed by Clark. Great defence by the loose forward. 40 metres out, Walters away now to a wide blind. He straightens up and goes up the centre. Oh, Steve Walters hammered by Jackson. They're just outside the 20-metre 20, uh, 20 line now. And they come, well, Renoff. Jackson keeps getting offside from Marker. And Renoff is tackled 15 out. This is the last. Dummy half is Lazarus. It's a crush now for Stewart. And Stewart decides, let's test them. And the ball goes over towards Connolly. Oh, Wishart got a great, uh, a great deflection, but Pay couldn't handle it. And the referee is ordering a turnover. Still, there's some scuffling in there. Wishart came up with almost clean ball and then tried to bat the ball down to play. Penalty goes now to Great Britain. So they've come off their own line twice in the last five minutes through the courtesy of Australian penalties. And here they are now with some very good line kicking. Harrison who got off the, uh, the straight track and went on a bit of an angle. Harrison, Goulding now. This is Farrell, 19 years of age, youngest player in the match. Youngest forward ever to represent Great Britain. Now Betts, up the centre. Oh, throws a pass willy-nilly, and uh, referee Annesley has ruled a knock on. And we've got a bad injury here to Ian Roberts. Straight away, Laurie Daly signalled to the bench. Very badly cut, I think, up around the eye area. He went in 
low on Dennis Betts, who may have even caught him with a boot as he was falling, totally accidental. Well, the doctor is there immediately, Nathan Gibbs. Brian Hollis realised exactly what had gone wrong, and he's, oh, oh, he's, yeah. he's trodden on his head. And Ian Roberts off the field. A lot of concern there from the head trainer, Brian Hollis, and, of course, the doctor, Nathan Gibbs. So we've lost Ian Roberts. That is, of course, a blood bin. The car just held up there by Annesley. It's Ian Roberts. Leaves the field. Now, Sirenen stood up to come on, but it does look as though Greg Florimo in 16 comes out. And he will go into lock. Deep play into the front row. Florimo makes his test debut. Daly on a run-around mission with Meninga and great defence by Great Britain. Their defence is great, Ray. They're just reading everything Australia are doing, and it's, it's fantastic. And they're hitting hard, just like that. This is Florimo now, 31 metres out from his own line. Wishart tries to catch the markers out. He succeeded in doing that, and there's a Great Britain player gone down injured. Lee Jackson. Played by Wishart, back and away for Fittler to take it up, and they go to the halfway line with Meninga. He puts on a fend. It didn't work for him. Hunt is there around the legs to make the tackle, the St. Helens centre. And Walters now goes back open side for Stewart to give on for Clyde. And he puts on the ground with the grubbing kick. Stedman goes across, and he'll have to bring it out of the corner, so they're not going to make too much headway, I wouldn't think. Renoff and Wishart make the tackle, and there's a groan from the Great Britain supporters about the high tackle from Wishart. Robinson almost gets away. Desperate tackle by Lazarus. 21 minutes gone in the match, and uh, it's Goulding giving it on for Betts. Dennis Betts is tackled by Fittler and Stewart. Robinson, fine young prospect, making a good run. This is joint. Front row forward, a second rower by profession, but pushed up into the front row by Ellery Hanley. I think another enormous improvement in the Great Britain side is the mobility of their forwards. Now they've always been skillful, but with the likes of, of Clark, young Farrell, Chris Joint, they're very, very quick along the ground and get off the ground quickly as well as Mullins beats two tackles. Uh, good run by Brett Mullins. He took that ball back on his own line. He was tackled 30 metres out. It's gone to Clyde quickly. Now to Florimo. Florimo's had an outstanding tour. Playing in the minor games, he's been one of our better players. As Eddinghausen gives a short ball for Pay. Pay goes up the centre, runs straight into Harrison right on the halfway line. Stewart waving players away to the right as he comes across and uh, Fittler goes back angling in amongst the forwards. Four points to two then, two penalty goals to Bobby Goulding. And we've had a quarter of the match go, but a bit more than that actually, about 22 minutes gone. As Clyde goes up the centre again and Big Harrison is there waiting. Blocking up the centre. Now Stewart. Shaping the kick, holding it up, running to the line. Meninga's pass goes behind Eddinghausen. <laughs> Turnover of possession. Well, that's more Andrew Eddinghausen's problem than Mal Meninga's. The winger is the man that should position himself favourably, and the best place the best place for that is a couple of metres behind the man inside you. And uh, the Great Britain player that was down injured gets some attention. It is Martin Offia. They're on the halfway line as Jackson goes across. He's OK now. Bets it is that uh, steps off the right foot, runs into Fittler. Fittler is doing an enormous amount of work. Walters and Pay making the tackle with him and then from Jackson on to Goulding and across for Powell. They come back in. Clark. And he's pulled down over the top by Clyde underneath by Lazarus. Now Harrison gets in the queue and puts his hand up and takes it to the 30-metre line. Picks up Jackson. Jackson to the 20. Picked up by Brad Clark. And he's smothered away by Stedman. Oh, isn't he a good player, Lee Jackson? He had a great game in the first test, and he's going just as well in this test. He's dangerous every time he runs at the football. Florimo now. Roberts, nasty injury. We'll get some more details on that as soon as we can. Renoff is 30 metres out. And look at Jackson. I can't believe that Annesley hasn't pinched him more than once in two matches. If he remains in front of the play of the ball until it's cleared the ruck. 
I would sincerely doubt it. Meninga got an awful pass. Eddinghausen and Offia. Eddinghausen held on the halfway mark by Goulding and by Offia over the top. Five gone. So Stewart now running to the blind side. Keeps it low. Gets it in behind Offia. That's a beautiful kick by Stewart. Finds the line for the mandatory 10-metre scrum on the Great Britain end of the ground. They lead by four to two. This is the kick from Ricky Stewart and with uh, precise accuracy. Alex, uh, have you a report on Ian Roberts? Well, they're saying down here that it's a very, very bad gash indeed. Uh, three, four inches, and they're talking maybe 15, 16 stitches right across his eye. It's in, he's in a very, very bad state. Goulding working the scrum and across for Powell. And the Powell from, from Sheffield. First representative player that club has, uh, has provided. Clark across the ground. Then the pass to ground and Renoff's tackle on Clark was very strong and Robinson is held down on the 20 metre line held by Clyde and very lucky the Australians that that pass didn't find us Marcus Florimo comes in high on Connolly there was a real chance there Renoff came flying in left an overlap I think Hanley knows that that was a chance Farrell picked up and put away by Dean Pay. certainly not phased by the occasion Dean Pay. now Powell across looking for the short ball and giving it for bets and bets Wishes to God he hadn't. Meninga hammered him into the ground and Betts loses the ball. No, it was taken off him, said the referee. The penalty goes to the home side. And again, I think Annesley has got it right. It was a big tackle from Mal Meninga. And he did just give the tackle Great Britain player a little bit of a push that wasn't needed. Dennis Betts it was. There he goes in. No need to go over the top again like that. So here's Harrison. Thumped into the ground by Fittler, Daly and Walters. They're just outside the 20-metre line. Some of the Australian forwards looking a little bit tired. So this is going to be a period of the game of great importance. Away for Goulding and a cross and a high ball for Stedman. Inside comes Hunt. Hunt eventually shut down by Clyde. Florimo was underneath. Jackson goes from dummy half again. His dummy half running is excellent. Providing Australia with a lot of worries, Lee Jackson. And fishes for a penalty there, he doesn't get it. Gilding across, intercepted by Meninga! The big bloke's away, Offia's after him, Eddinghausen's coming in support, Meninga, he's running out of legs, he finds Eddinghausen, he scores! Andrew gets his 10th try of the tour, Big Mel Meninga gets the intercept, and Andrew Eddinghausen scores! Ah, oh, the big legs, they were getting weary. You look for Offia, he was flying and there was plenty of support coming. The intercept taken from Bobby Goulding was going across to try and pick up some outside support. There's, and there's the intercept, fingertip control from Mal. 10 metre start on Offia and ET is off in pursuit as well. He did everything right, Meninga. You didn't think that he knew Offia was there, but there was no doubt as soon as Offia arrived, the timing of the pass was superb. Watch the way ET gets down low. Sensational stuff. Ten tries for the tour. Andrew Eddinghausen, and look at the big fella, Paul. Oh, they're pumping the legs. Look at them go. Ten years ago, he would have been under the sticks. Not at 34, and E.T., great effort by him to keep in contact and get down. Always dangerous when a halfback drifts across the line, throws those flat passes, and Goulding found out there. Well, it didn't stick the first time. It stuck the second. And then he got these big, these big legs pumping, as Paul said. Andrew went in, then he went out. He said, where do you want me? And Mal said on the outside, and there he is for the try. Pretty nice catch from Eddinghausen, too, just with the one, the one arm. Oh, they're better right. hands in rugby league than Andrew Eddinghausen. You know, he's done some amazing stuff over here. He's got plenty of tries. He is what the leading try scorer over here, and some of them he's really needed to come up with some great handling to get across the line. The sun's come out. Let's hope it's shining on Rod Wishart. From the touchline, looking for 100 points for the tour. It's wide, but Australia leads by six points. Back at Old Trafford, Australia leading six points to four. Just as Great Britain looked so dangerous. The pendulum swung and it looked to me as though it had to swing. 
Australia desperately needed to crack them. Fittler does it again. Fittler's away from Connolly. Renoff comes in. He beats Jackson, but he's pulled down by Powell. Five metres into Great Britain's territory. Quickly across now to Dean Pay, And then for Stewart. Now for Walters. Walters now 40 metres out from the Great Britain line. An eerie sight here. The sun shining down on half of the crowd and not the others. It's Daly, 40 metres out from the Great Britain line. 30 minutes gone in the Test match, a Test match that has to be won by Australia. Stewart gets the pass away as Goulding makes the tackle. Walters goes for the bomb, it's gone straight up and down. He puts everybody on side and makes a tackle on Hunt. He knew his kick wasn't all that flash, so he did the next best thing. Off he goes across. And now they come back with Powell just outside his own 20-metre line. Lazarus making the tackle. You can see how this try had listed, had list, lifted the Australians. I'll get that out shortly. That's easy, right. easy for you to say. <laughs> they did need that. But in general run of play, Great Britain had been the better side for that first half. But just in the last two minutes, there's a spring in the step of the Kangaroos. Here's Joint now. Just stepping and looking for an opening to run at. Stedman, you're feeling better now, Peter. Can it's kangaroo step? <laughs> you don't get much help from your co-commentator, that's for sure. Jackson, who's been a star for Great Britain, back for Stedman. Stedman keeps the kick low. It uh, goes down to Weddinghouse and he takes it as he crouches low and then puts that beautiful running action across the turf of Old Trafford, having scored the try that put Australia in front. Here's Clyde coming away. I must admit I thought there might have been a cloud over Bradley Clyde being totally healthy, but he's played well. Florimo grabbing every opportunity on his debut mission. And what a day to make it. What a day for debuts. Here's La Lazarus turning it inside for Pay. His first test at Wembley as a sub. This is his first run on test against the Englishman, Stewart and Meninga combine, and Fittler is there, and Walters is there, and now it's with Dean Pay. Jackson makes the tackle. Pay was keen to get it away for Brett Mullins. Now this is the last. What will they do? Stewart, he decides to kick. It's the reverse cross kick, if you like. And down it comes, the Canberra kick. And uh, they're all on side. It's battered across by Mullins. Renoff is there. Clyde comes inside. Gives it away for Walters. Walters is seven metres out. Gets it back. It's with Daly. Now it's away for Clyde. Clyde, he puts it over the line. Bradley Clyde has scored. Australia's second try. Ah, oh, great try to Australia. They were never dead there. They kept looking and looking for support. And it kept coming in the end. Bradley Clyde, the hero, gets over for Australia's second try. Fantastic, he's caught the knock as he went over as well. What all came from a kick that Great Britain would have nothing to do with. What about the pass from Steve Wallace to keep things alive? How he ever found Laurie Daly, I'll never know. All the chases were on side. Mullins has a look, he bats it out to his outside support. First man there, Renoff, running out of room on the far corner. Clyde comes back inside. Now this is where it looked like play could have broken down, but Steve Renoff miraculously gets a ball back to Laurie Daly. Straight away, numbers on the left. But Clyde keeps the head down and burrows over. Clyde was thinking about passing to his unmarked player on the outside, and then he, he realised he was only two metres out, and with brute strength, which he possesses in great, uh, great quantities, you watch it when it comes to its ultimate, this try. Clyde has the chance to pass, but he decides to beat them with power. There, the dummy, and he says, I'll do it myself. Well, the game's changed in a twinkling, hasn't it? They were standoffish with that ball in the air, Great Britain, and they played the penalty. Tension, the order of the day. Australia by 10 points to four. Wishart's kick looks OK, doesn't it? It's over for another two points. That makes Rod Wishart's 100 points for the tour. 100 points, and look how this ground, this ground runs away to the corners. And Clyde crashes into joint and does it, as I said, with brute strength. Hugh now. Yeah, they're starting to miss a lot of tackles, Great Britain, just falling off very simple tackles. And the fatigue factor comes into the match now. Lazarus now. The second wind, Glenn, he was doing a lot of work in defence, making some desperate tackles. Now Meninga thinks about a short pass. 
tries to walk over the top of Betts. Been very noticeable that both the centres from Australia have been much more involved than Wembley. Mal's touched the football plenty of times in this first half, and Renoff has gone looking for it. He's got into dummy half at times, sped out, and that's helped the team's performance. That tackle didn't. Robinson underneath. Steve Walters cleans up. Robinson, a lethal weapon. You can't let him into space. There are some that feel... Oh, Lazarus with a shoulder. And that really shook Bobby Goulding up. And now from dummy half goes Clark, and again Lazarus makes the tackle. He's back in the test arena, the big fellow, and he's making the best of it. Harrison, he was going straight, but now he's putting a little bit of an angle into his work. As Jackson gives it off, and Betts has to reach down. He's got Farrell with him, but there's Lazarus again with Steve Walters. Former teammates. Five tackles gone for Great Britain. They haven't done all that well on this set. Gilding's kick is low. And Ebbinghausen fields it with the right foot before picking it up. Hunters across after him. And now Mullins looks for a channel. He gets through it. He gets through it. Oh, Clark shuts it. But Mullins was looking very dangerous. As we look down and find 36 minutes gone. And here's Wishart! Wishart! He finds an angle! He's away! They're after him! totally has got him! Ten metres out from the line. They need a quick play the ball for the third try. They can probably just about shut this match down right here if they can score. It's away for Fettler, inside for Mullins, 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 he's over! Third try for Australia! Oh yeah, that'll do me, sensational football, Stewart and Mullins, the old combination from Canberra, and there it is, right next to the post. Australia go to a commanding lead now, 16 to 4. Great Britain, they fall apart in a matter of minutes. Andrew Farrell, I've seen a bit of him. He's not up to test standard. It was all set up by this Rod Wishart run. And eventually, we didn't get a quick play of the ball, but there were big numbers to the right-hand side. It looked as though Stewart wanted to take advantage. But in the end, the pass back inside from Fittler. You could see there, Stedman should have come up earlier. And then Mullins... Well, once he gets a sniff of a gap, he's through it. Stepped through a couple of tackles. But you'll see the inside defence here when the ball goes to Fittler hasn't come across. And Fittler had the awareness to turn the back inside to ball back inside to Mullins. Stedman late in coming forward. And Connolly couldn't come up with his second try-saving tackle in a matter of moments. Uh, Stewart's going better as the match gets on. Goes longer. He's really uh, setting up all the Australian play now from left to right. Five tries on tour now for Brett Mullins. We came away with high expectations for him. And he really deserved that try because he was the one that made the biggest impact. Wishart, he converts. Australia leading now by 18 points to four. Substitution coming on for Great Britain. Let's take it from Alex Murphy. Well, this is a, a big occasion for Gary Schofield. Left out for the first test, but brought back for the second. What an important game he now has. But it makes you wonder what Australia are doing when they score a try. They now look eager for the ball. All the three quarters look as though they need it, and the forwards are playing out of this world. Gary Schofield coming into the match will make him just one short of the, the most tests played for Great Britain. Mick Sullivan with 46 holds that for them and Gary goes into this match his 45th test. He's not on as yet, but he is about to come into the game. I'm told from the sideline, the, the huddles here. Here's a penalty going to Australia. Frustration coming out of Alan Hunt. The huddle is underneath us and uh, you can't see anything through the naked eye. You rely totally on the cameras as uh, the penalty has been taken the tap will be taken on the halfway line this is Dean Pay. 42 meters out from the Great Britain line Australia leading by 18 points to four and here's Daly taken by Powell nothing certain in this game and big margins have been whittled away but just looking at what Australia is doing today it is going to be a big a big task for Great Britain to come out of this one Florimo into the match with Ian Roberts off with a nasty head wound. 
As Walters serves it up, they get a bit of depth in their attack as Pay takes it ahead. Now this will be the play that they're setting for. Daly and Meninga are very deep and Fittler is out on the back line outside Stewart. Stewart is with it now. He cuts out Fittler, goes to Daly. Now for Meninga. Then it's across for Renoff. And Renoff is tackled 18 metres out. That's the turnover. 18 points to four. And 40 minutes of, uh, of time have elapsed. So it's uh, the time off period that we're now watching. Off here across the ground. He beats two. Now they straighten with Connolly. And he's hit by Clyde. 16th test for Gary Connolly. Never scored a try. Off here across now for Robinson to chime in. Scored a great try against the Australians at, St. Hel at, uh, at Wigan. He can do it from anywhere, Jason Robinson. He plays it back on his 30-metre line. It's with Goulding and across now for Farrell. And Farrell's got bets on his outside, but Daly is around his midriff. A few metres from the halfway line. We're pretty close to half-time. It's a very important part of the game, uh, obviously, for both sides. But it's, uh, it's not a time to relax. I thought they'd be looking for the little chip over the top here. They know that... A try now would get them back in it before half-time. Bobby Goulding now running around in circles. That's the quality of the defence of the Australians. So too, Hunt. And this well, is Lazarus the last. was so confident about his pace, he actually was chasing Goulding. They play the ball on the halfway line. Betts now sees plenty of pasture. Now, Lee Jackson is in front of the kicker, and he goes up and handballs the ball down. And referee Annesley, I feel, has played the advantage as Stewart comes up with it. There's the half-time siren. And Goulding is all over Stuart Annesley and the touch judge rush in. Fittler pulls Goulding away. But a tremendous first half of football. On chest, he's really not been running as like he can run. But that was centre play at its very, very best. Great running. The lad was never going to be caught. And what he did, he did, he was world class. He drew Martin a fire, knew he had to tackle him. Andy Attenhausen did exactly well to go down and score a try. But I'm really impressed now the way the Australian forwards are playing. They're running the British lads. And the football and set up with some great passes in the kicking game. It's been good. An injury to Ian Roberts, of course. Uh... Gilding across, intercepted by Meninga. The big bloke's away. Off he is after him. Eddinghausen's coming in support. Meninga, he's running out of legs. He finds Eddinghausen. He scores. Andrew gets his 10th try of the tour. Big Mel Meninga gets the intercept. And Andrew Eddinghausen scores. Oh, the big legs, they were getting weary. You look for Offia, he was flying and there was plenty of support coming. The intercept taken from Bobby Goulding was going across to try and pick up some outside support. And there's the intercept, fingertip control from Mal. 10 metre start on Offia and ET is off in pursuit as well. He did everything right, Meninga. You didn't think that he knew Offia was there, but there was no doubt as soon as Offia arrived, the timing of the pass was superb. And watch the way ET gets down low. Said nothing is uh, is over here. Gary Schofield is on. That's where they're coming through Goulding and now through Schofield. And then a nice pass out to Farrell. The pass has gone astray. Renoff is onto it, but Robinson beats him to the punch. Robinson tackled just on the Australian side of the halfway. 18 to 4 then. Early seconds of the second half. And good morning to you in Australia if you're watching the test, and I know that many of you are. Record figures for the first as it goes from Schofield across for Goulding and then the runner out. That creates the extra man you love. Pulled down by Mal Meninga. Oh, great tackle from Meninga. It looked like New Love had him for pace outside, but held on. Goulding goes high. This is a pretty fair kick. Eddinghausen, difficult catch, makes it look easy. Did he what? He provided himself with a lot of time. And Florimo works out from the 20-metre line. He's had an impact in his in his debut test. Greg Florimo, Paul. Yes, and, and he's just uh, he's had a great tour, as we've said many, many times. As Renoff now looks to make ground. He's he's going and look at him go. Renoff is inside the 30-metre line. Walters quickly up the dummy half, but the play the ball has been slowed down. Stewart is with it. And now Daly, this is Meninga, the Canberra connection to the 20-metre line. Darkening at Manchester as uh, Stewart goes around the back to pick up Dean Pay and Pay, he can pop a ball, he does. Florimo gives it air and Rinoff oh. makes a diving catch to keep it alive. What a catch. That was brave. Now to the right. Daly, Daly sees pasture, goes through it. Daly, go Laurie. Yes, he's in. Laurie Daly scores. That will do him the world of good. 
He made his debut here. He wasn't happy in 1990 with what he did. And he scores a try through lazy Great Britain defence. Well, I backed him to score the first try, but he's got the fourth. And a simple one. They've, they've taken over early in this second half where they left off. The step was too good. No chance, Carl Harrison. A yawning gap there, and Laurie Daly. Thank you very much. What about oh. Big Carl? I thought he was genuflecting to him as he went through. Well, he saw past you, and then he said to Harrison, I'm going straight past you, and Daly over near the sticks. Great try to Laurie Daly, but a huge gap there between Harrison and Lee Jackson. Yeah, he's got a lovely way with words, hasn't he, Paul? It's a shame to lose it. A little play on... Plenty of Australian rumps running in the wrong direction for them. Laurie Daly, eh? Captain of New South Wales to three consecutive State of Origin victories. Second try on tour only for Laurie Daly. Wearing his 17th Australian cap today and Wishart, he converts. Australia then by 24. Oh, that tackle is high on Clyde. Harrison. He must be wearing a sign on his face, hit me here, because every time Brad comes to, uh, to England, he gets a smack over the mouth. Well, Annesley was calling out Lee Jackson the actual fact it's Harrison who went high on Clyde. Wooshka. Caution on the run there, and uh, so an Australian now will be in an attacking position inside the Great Britain half. They could smash him now. Well, it'll be, going, it'll be interesting the rest of this game because it's important that Great Britain go into the third test match with something out of this game. Australia, of course, looking to really dominate and that's very, very close to send-off material, one from Harrison. Please They've got to come back, Great yet. Britain. Please don't write them off yet. I'm certainly not going to say it because I'm the biggest hex of all. This is Fittler now. 30 metres out and he shovels the ball down for Walters. And Steve Walters, even though he's got that suspect left knee, he's, he's matched it run for run with Lee Jackson. Now they run decoys and go up the centre with Pay. Gets it across for Florimo. Florimo does a bit of dancing with Dennis Betts. And the Florimo has tackled 20 metres out from the line. 24 to 4 then, Australia in front. They're in command of the Old Trafford Test. Daly, a short pass. Fiddler, Fiddler inside for Renoff. Renoff's on his way and he falls over. Gets a pass away. Daly, Daly's two metres out from the line. Australia looking to shut it right down. The ball comes out, it's a scrum. Well, what odds was Steve Renoff when he got through that gap? He was fanning him 40 to 1 on. And he slipped. Well, I do think if it had if gone for the outside as well, he still would have scored. He, he looked to change direction a couple of times, although Connolly was, was making good progress. Great ball. And Jackson got Daly very close. Scrum win to Great Britain. Robinson now taking 20 metres out, 15 metres out. Robinson with no markers, and uh, he can prove potent from anywhere, as I mentioned earlier, Jason Robinson, 20 years of age. The Wigan wing three-quarter. They go to the right, uh, to the left, and Schofield unloads for Farrell. Farrell is there to be tackled by Daly and Meninga. 24 to four then. Daly a try since the break, and Wishart converted, and it's now with Schofield. He keeps it low off the right foot. And down inside the 20-meter line, seven minutes of the second half gone. Mullins, who scored a try, comes back and tries to break through. They shut down the defense off here involved on one of the few occasions that he has been and now Stewart runs across there's a gap out wide Stewart's trying to promote it for Wishart and then Stewart takes the hammering of Carl, of Carl Harrison 28 out from the Australian line they work the blind side Dean Pay runs at them and I've got a funny feeling we're looking at a fellow that's going to be in these colors for quite some time to come and Stewart gives it away for Lazarus Lazarus pulled down by Betts Super game by the uh, by the Bronco front row forward. Wobbles out from dummy half now. Joint missed him. Harrison got him. Florimo's calling for a quick play of the ball. Five uh, tackles are gone. And Stewart uses it through the hands. Daly is with it. They've got numbers. They've got two on one. Meninga comes back on the inside. Then gets a pass away. Handballed away by Eddinghouse. And Daly goes to the air. The chase is on. Coming through is Florimo. Florimo goes for it. Gets a touch to it, but it goes forward. And Stedman comes away for Great Britain. And a great tackle by Bradley Clyde. Inside their 20 metre line. Offia comes in, runs back and shovels the ball out there for Robinson. 
He's kidding Martin Oppia. He just will not have a go, will not take the line on. He runs across the field 20 metres and tries to find someone to pass it to. Schofield's kick is a shocker. Wishart hurries back. Robinson's in pursuit, but he's 20 metres away. Wishart now, back on his own. He can't afford to lose the ball here. Clyde is back, as you might expect. He always is. Schofield tried to shut the ball down. Daly away for Mullins. Mullins runs hard and fast at the gap. 15 is getting ready to come on for Great Britain. It is Barry McDermott. He's listed as 17. He'll come on in 15 as Australia gets the penalty. Linger talking to Daly, just saying to Laurie, just, just slow it down. I guess that's what he's saying, as McDermott waits in the wings. The new boys at Wigan, Barry McDermott, a fine player. And it, uh, it might be that it is Harrison who'll come off, although it might even be his, his front row partner, but I think that might have been the message to Harrison, you're coming off. Are they looking for a blood bin? Yes, they are. They've asked uh, the referee for a blood bin. That has been granted by Graham Annesley, so Harrison will come off. And McDermott, a 22-year-old, will go on. The second test. And a big roar from the crowd. McDermott, who got time for a shot on Paul Siren in the Central Park. So Australia now taking the tap. And Dean Pay with the head down and the legs driving like pistons has tackled 25 out from the Great Britain line. They hold down in the tackle. I thought Annesley might have given the penalty. Here's Clyde from the back. Great tackle by Chris Joint, and it's on in there. The test is blown up again. Well, Bradley Clyde got smashed again. I think you'll find it was Barry McDermott coming over the top in his first involvement in the game. Annesley didn't like this. He, someone might go here. Well, at the end of the day... Well, you couldn't offer that, but he... He was quick to react to give a penalty, and Steve Wallace came in there. Well, it was the head-eye tackle on the way through. At the end of the day, I was about... Oh, Steve Walters gives him a bang over the ear with an open hand, but... I just, I'm worried about Bradley Clyde. I hope I'm worrying unnecessarily, but he has taken so many high shots. Uh, there must be some concern about the lad because a knock so quickly after being heavily concussed can be very damaging. Well, they're lining up here to get, I mean, Steve Wallace had a go, then Dean Pay came There's in. the sin bin now. Dean Pay had a crack in him as well. They were queuing up to get the McDermott, but they'll have to wait another 10 minutes. Yeah, Walters has gone as well for 10. So McDermott leads the way to the sin bin and he's followed by Steve Walters. Steve, of course, for basically taking the law into his own hands. Sick and tired, I guess, of Bradley Clyde taking high shot after high shot. And he reacted like I guess most, most club mates would. But McDermott, gee, there's a question mark on, on his discipline. Has he got any? Wishart then will take the penalty from right in front, 21 or 19 metres out. 24 to 4. Four tries. Eddinghausen, Clyde, Mullins, and of course, Laurie Daly. So three of the Raiders have been over, and one is in the sin bin. Siren and on the bench, Langer back top left corner As we come back to Rod Wishart 39,000 have bought tickets to Ellen Road and are they in for a treat or what as they set a new aggregate crowd figure for test matches in England Wishart been kicking beautifully this one he hits badly but he gets the two points 26 to 4 then the now with uh, Steve Holders in there. Welcome back with Lazarus playing the ball just outside the 20-metre line. The, the number 14 jumper is Alan Langer, who is on. 
Well, that's right. Steve Waller's in the sin bin. They need a hooker and dummy half out there. That's why Langer has gone on. Unfortunately, as Fiddler goes up the middle, it's uh, Greg Florimo who's had a big game. He's the man who's been replaced. There he is there. He'll be very proud of his efforts today. Langer across into the hands of Stewart. Stewart lobbing it down into the in goal, but it's a very narrow in goal, and Stewart's not happy with his kick. And that little experiment of Bob Fulton's as a concerned Ellery Hanley talks to his assistant coach Hetherington but um, that little shuffle of the half backs into Hooker and Dummy half for 40 minutes each back I'm not sure where it was I think Castleford that will come into its own now because Alan Langer is in there just for a while now it's across through Goulding to, to Dennis Betts and Betts just getting away from Clyde's tackle which was secured over the top by Alfie Langer now Schofield outside the 40. Farrell runs strong and hard. Gets it inside. Schofield's there. Kicks ahead for Connolly. Wishart has to turn. Connolly and Wishart. Connolly. He's over. It's a try. No. He's disallowed it. Well, I think you'll find the touch judge has actually ruled against the try, saying that Gary Connolly was in touch before getting the ball down. Beautiful work on the short side. Great pass from Gary Schofield to Farrell. Looked across to see where the speed men were and he saw they were on the outside. And this should show it up perfectly. Wishart claims Connolly. There it is, he's ah, in touch. Yeah, he was spot on the touch, Judge. This is the second or third tackle now on the new set of six as Australia bring it out quickly towards halfway. And Meninga is tackled there. Well, Gary Connolly's not meant to score a try. This is his 16th test. He still hasn't scored one. A Stewart reverses it. Clyde goes up the centre, runs into the waiting clutches of Dennis Betts. Clark coming over the top. Langer a dummy half. Stewart gives him the call with Stewart. Now Daly. Daly steps off the left foot, runs at the gap and is pulled out on the 40-metre line. Tackled by Farrell Will. Come on, come on. Schofield's off for the line, but he's... He's been called back, and Annesley's quite right. And I've got to say to you that how many times the front marker gets out of the line before the ball is clear of the ruck is incredible. Schofield wasn't even front marker. He was second marker, standing shoulder to shoulder. And the crowd booed Annesley. How could you boo him? Come on. Uh, good decision there by Annesley, the correct one. But the play the ball area over here in Great Britain is a just a bun fight they don't half the time they don't even play the ball properly they don't they just roll it back between the legs no contact with the foot and the Greg McCallum who has just come over here to take over the refereeing number one spot as the head of the the whole box and dice he's got a lot of work ahead of him well, Gary Schofield is a, is a lovely man uh, and uh, I would imagine a man that would put his hands up if he was caught with his hand in the lolly jar but he actually complained to Graham Annes. Well, he complained, Ray, because he'd have got away with it at club level over here. And that's why that's why the crowd don't like it as well, because I'm sure that they've seen it at club level before where it's been called play on. Well, all I can say to that is that Greg McCallum has got a nice job in front of him, and he can have it. Fix up the problem here, Greg, with referees, and you're an absolute messiah. Wishart then from 35 out. Australia. 26 to 4, 18 gone. The kick is coming around ever so gently and wide. Ball bouncing up on the first bounce for, for Brad Fittler to come away. And that big step off the left foot. And then he's got his arms free looking to unload. They're looking for each other today. They're talking today, the Australians. And Brad Clyde... He's been there for longer than he was at Wembley and the Great Britain side know it and Lazarus. What a performance by him today. Langer a dummy half. Walters in the sin bin, so is McDermott. Through to Stewart and on for Daly. Meninga's out there, Mullins comes in and Mullins takes the ball. It was rather fortuitous for Australia, but it was play on as he... Now plays the ball back to Langer on the halfway. Fittler pushes, pushes across to the extra men on the left of the ground. Pay for Renoff. Renoff running straight into Jackson. 
Now they're 40 metres away on tackle number five. Well, Langer caught the second marker, and he got the pass away. Stewart runs across on an angle. Eddinghausen is there. Meninga's on his inside. He's centre kicks. Alfie Langer's going through after it. And so is Meninga. Oh, Stedman. Stedman hammered by Langer and Meninga. Oh, outstanding take from Graham Stedman. It was little and large coming at him. Mal and Alfie. And here's a penalty for exactly the same infringement as Schofield was pulled up for. The marker's not in line. Stedman gets play underway very quickly. It's been a feature of their game today, their line kicking. As Cassidy comes on. Debut at Wembley. Another penalty goes to Great Britain. Farrell finds the line this time. Now, they are in the go zone, if you like. Through Goulding for Schofield. They cut out the captain. They find Betts out wide. Betts, he's up to the 20. That's a forward pass, I thought. Clark joins in. Now Robinson. Robinson beats Mullins. But he's taken there by Dean Pay. Ten metres out from the line. Stewart is back in the line. He wasn't there for the last, uh, the last two tackles. Goulding across. Then Schofield. Now it's out wide. That's New Love. This is Stedman. And out wide. They get the pass back in field. Picked up by Jackson. Jackson. He gets the ball out the back. Picked up by New Love again. As Connolly is it. Now it's New Love. He'll score. New Love is over. Well, talk about ball promotion. The Lions were brilliant. Yeah, great football by those long balls. There's the kick by Bobby Goulding. It's offline. 26 to 8 then Australia over Great Britain. Uh, Steve Walters is back in the action for Australia, which would mean that McDermott also is back on the field for Great Britain, both players coming out of the sin bin. And here they are making the ball do the work. They have got nothing to lose now. And Betts makes a break. Connolly is with him on the outside. Support on the inside. Betts, he passes to Connolly. Wishart's got him and puts him away nine metres out from the line. Well, England are starting to come back. Across they go wide with the big ball for Stedman. Then the pass is knocked on by New Love. The hero becomes the villain. A oh, great break made by Dennis Betts through some flimsy defence. If the Australians think that this game is home and hosed, they'll have to start thinking again. The cutout pass was a good one from both Schofield and Stedman. New Love had two goes at it. Couldn't come up with the take. Dennis Betts limping off now. New Love. He's been involved. The thing that impressed me about when he, when he scored the try, he had to get up off the ground to put himself in. Puzzles me because I thought he would have come back simultaneously with Walters. They went off at the same time unless, unless the Australian watch is running slower. <laughs> Australia. Australia now with Daly making a half break. And 25 out from his own line. Betts has left the field. Floromo is back on. Meninga goes up the centre, dragging players with him. Walters gets in, looks for a quick play. The ball from his captain. And Brad Clyde, realising that they need some good settling forward runs, reaches the halfway line. That would be their fourth tackle, and they're making the halfway mark on four tackles. As Dean Play gets the pass away, Renoff sees an opening, tries to go through it. He looks on the inside for Wishart, and they come in and they cannon him off into the ground. Betts back on the bench, and Australia now, just outside the 20-metre line. Stewart fires a pass that must have gone 20 metres. It's with Daly who loses his footing, and that's tackle number five. Great Britain putting their line together as Stewart kicks on the reverse for Mullins. Mullins might get the bounce. No, Cassidy did. And Cassidy makes a run for Great Britain. Driven into the ground, loses the ball. Lazarus made the tackle. The ball comes loose and Australia have got it. They play it outside the 20-metre line. Stewart is giving it now. Daly, oh, Connolly took Daly. But there's a try coming. Florimo inside. Renoff. Renoff goes in to score. Renoff gets the try for Australia. No tripping over for Steve Renoff this time. Laurie Daly knew that the outside men from Great Britain were coming in very quickly. Set the try. I don't know whether he batted it all or missed it completely, Laurie, but it was. Well, achieved a big gap for Australia. Boromo didn't have the pace to get there, but Renoff does. And so any a great side, Australia, any chance of a Great Britain comeback, there's just been blown out of the water. And Fatty, that goes back to the tackle from Glenn Lazarus that forced the ball loose. Martin Offia had an ideal opportunity to dive on the loose ball. 
he'll come off here with he could play in the same jersey next time so Renoff scores his sixth try in four test matches and on every occasion that he's played against Great Britain on their soil he has scored a try Renoff one of the reasons for this improvement today Wishart ah straight as a dart beautiful kick back to the halfway for Stedman That's the way the try looks from the other side of the ground. Cameras on the other side. Australia turning the 8-4 loss at Wembley into a, a massive defeat on Great Britain here at Old Trafford. And Old Trafford again proves a bogey man as Fittler punches the Great Britain defence. Kicks ahead for Daly. Stedman's after it. Daly looks for his second try. He won't make it. Daly grabbing at that right knee. McDermott away from the 20 metre line. Jackson pushes it on. Off here looking for somebody else. 25 out from his line. Daly still down behind the Great Britain in the dead ball line so he's in a, all sorts of trouble probably for something he didn't have to do he was never going to reach the football so australia may lose a player through uh, that injury daly gave me the impression he looked back at something in the ground or on the ground now they're on the halfway line that was the fourth tackle as they come across through Goulding for Schofield, and then out wide, Cassidy tried to get the pass away, it came off in Australia, and then off the feet of Robinson, and as we said, six more, and that's the right ruling as Robinson has tackled 31 metres out from the Australian line. 32 points to eight then. I'm looking at the watch, about 11 minutes of time remaining. Clark will play it now, and a knock-on is offered by Jackson, his first real blemish in two test matches that we've seen him in. Just in that last little roll down the hill that got him on that right knee. Well, he really put some pressure on that knee, didn't he? He's glimping back uh, into line now. Alex, what's your theory on that injury to Daly? Well, what they're saying down here is it could be one of the sprinkler heads uh, just over the dead ball line. Meninga inside for Mullins. Alex, I'll come back to you. I said it once before they won't catch him, but that was Matt Sears. There's no Matt Sears today, and Mullins gets his second try. Well, it's all too easy now. Some very simple defensive errors from this Great Britain team. And Mullins gets his second for the match. Laurie Daly, he'd only just come back on side. He was out playing on the wing. A nice little change. Mal Meninga, who's been very, very strong today, got a great ball back inside. Not the speed from McDermott, nor Farrell. And what about the stride? About 12 feet. Sixth try of the tour for Brett Mullins. Mal Meninga's had a fantastic game today, the Australian captain. Went a bit ordinary at Wembley, but he's made up for that today with a just a brilliant game. Great captain's game. That's the more important aspect that was lacking at Wembley. There were two things that I wanted the Great Britain audiences to see, and that was Eddinghausen and Mullins in full flight. And they've seen them both to their disappointment today. Sirenen has gone on, Daly has come off, and Alex down on the sidelines will check that uh, injury to Daly, and we'll go back to him in just a moment. Wishart right in front. He's had a good test match, Wishart. He won the spot over Wendell Saylor. He converts, and 38 to 8 as Daly now hobbles back to the reserve bench. Alex, uh, were you able to get anything from the doctor or from Daly? Yes, what it is down here, he's definitely at uh, the sprinkler head with his kneecap and he looks in a lot of pain, he's a lot of blood around the kneecap and uh, he looks in a little bit of agony, but what a different lot of Daly's playing today. A big game from a big man. Well, here's Brad Clyde coming off his own line through Jackson. It's become paper thin, almost embarrassing the, the uh, British defence. Steve Walters running like a halfback. 
Fittler, Sirinan. When all else has been charging down on you, suddenly you look up and six foot five of Paul Sirinan comes at you. Mullins links in, looks for his third. 42 metres up now from the British line. Fitless pass intercepted by Jackson. 38 to 8, just checking that score again. That is McDermott. Now Jackson. Well, what a glorious day it's been for Australia. Farrell, Clark offered him the run around. Farrell put his head down. Jackson across. Goulding is with it. He, put, he puts the run around together for Schofield, but Schofield puts it down. Australia comes up with it. They would have got it eventually from the scrum contest anyway. Lazarus now offloads for Sirenen. Right on the halfway mark, and to the blind side goes Meninga. Britain's reserve. And they're making the tackle. Paul Newlove. They come across to Stewart, and then across the face of Pay to Fitler. Fitler kicks for Renoff. Renoff was he taken out? He is on the ground with Connolly. Robinson comes away. The touch judges have done nothing about it. Robinson with an incisive run. Look at him go, the little man, to the halfway line. Yeah, it's a good call from the referee. Steve Renoff ran straight into Gary Connolly. Nothing Connolly could do about it. Jason Robinson again has been Great Britain's best as McDermott just tries to offload, does so to Stedman, and Cassidy out wide has got some support, doesn't use it. Sharon and Meninga eventually halting Mick Cassidy, now Goulding. A long pass over for Schofield, then for Farrell, and Farrell puts a step on. I don't know that Andrew Farrell is a, a passer of the football. Offia gets involved on a run around with Schofield, then goes one way, back the other. I'd love to know how many yards forward Martin Offia has made in two tests. One. This is Robinson. What did you say? One. One. He's yeah. almost an embarrassment to this great... I know he can score a try from anywhere, but uh, when the defence is in front of him, he will not have a go. Carl Harrison is tackled just outside the 20-metre line. Well, the bloke on the other wing has had far less experience and him has embarrassed his wing companion as Stedman. Puts one in behind, Eddinghausen turns and does well, taken by Newlove. Line drop out to restart, 38 to 8, maybe about five minutes remaining in the match, a touch more. Stedman's kick, well weighted, Newlove the chaser, but Eddinghausen, he was there far too early for them. Well. Alex has not only got that, he's got to pick the heads up because they've really dropped in the last 10, 15 minutes. And I'm a little bit concerned. I think Gary Schofield's got to start from the beginning. Newlove's got to start off. Sean Edwards will come back at number number seven. And I think they'll bring Sonny Nickel back in. But he's certainly got to make some changes because uh, there's a lot of these lads down here really looked out of the depth. Young Farrell looks to me as though he needs another 12 months playing senior football. There's some interesting comments there from Alex Murphy. I was only thinking to myself, as we see a Great Britain player, Lee Jackson, unable to play the ball after the tackle of Siren and, and Lazarus. They go across to the left now for McDermott. And don't be surprised if he happens to be in the run on side, McDermott. And a penalty goes to Great Britain. They will take the tap. 38 points to eight as Schofield uses Clark and then Connolly just inside the 20 metre line Goulding has not had the impression on the game that he did at, Wemb at Wembley but then again it might not have been a game designed for the number seven on a side comprehensively beaten by the Kangaroos one thing that Great Britain will take out of this game is that their first 20 minutes they were great once again, they started so well, they've got to work out some way they can convert 20 minutes into 80 minutes. It was up to that stage, the intercept taken by Mal Meninga, they were on top in this match. As Goulding now goes across, field. good ball. It's Farrell. Well, Farrell taken by Sirenen, they go across, they roll the ball into the end goal, not quite. 
And there to clean it up is the fullback for Australia, Brett Mullins. The scorer of two tries. And about three minutes on the clock. 38 to 8, Australia. Lazarus almost out to the 10 metre point. Well, been, a, been a great win for Australia, and I, I think probably a bloke who deserves a, a bit of a rap is the coach, Bob Fulton. He knew after the first test that changes were needed, and he was prepared to make them after sifting through the form of the last couple of weeks. He has come up with a top combination. Certainly the changes have been justified, Fatty. Glenn Lazarus, I think tour football really does suit him. The more football that he plays, the better he gets. Well... To be fair to Lazarus, he didn't have a lot of football following the Melbourne cricket ground. Short passing, sees Serenan. He hears the goal from Fittler. Fittler is down to the 40 metre line, swivels away. Renov tries to step, gets the pass away. Eddinghausen, Eddinghausen over the 20, runs into Wishart, pushes him away as well, and he's put on an obstruction. Oh, he's pushing them all away. He's beaten 20 of them and one of ours, but it's cost them a penalty. Great run by E.T. If Wishart isn't there, he probably scores a try. He might have beaten Robinson. Well, does that go down for a missed tackle for Wishart? <laughs> a Great Britain come back. A couple of minutes left in the game. McDermott loses it. And it's been raked out, so it's a penalty to the home side. I was going to make the point about Lazarus that after that crippling injury at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, he, he scarcely saw much football. And if you remember, Wayne Bennett didn't have him in the run-on side for the Broncos. So he, he, he didn't have much of a chance to get fit. And then he tore the, 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 the groin muscle in the match against Cumbria. So obviously, he's going to get better with, uh, with match play. Schofield out wide for Farrell. And Farrell has been lurking out there the greater part of the second half. Clark using Connolly as a, a decoy. He went back looking up the centre for Robinson. Now Connolly rolls it in, but it's over the dead ball line. It's far too deep there. Fielding one of the ball going back to the blind side. The official man of the match has just been announced. It's gone to Bradley Fittler. He's had a fine game, Fittler. For mine, I couldn't separate Dean Pay or Bradley Clyde. Oh, you could throw in Lazarus as well. I mean, Meninga's just a shandy off it as well. It's been a great team performance. Lazarus now out to the 30-metre line. Annesley is going to put a scrum down, ruling that there was a knock on Bob Fulton with uh, Sean McRae and smiles all around. <laughs> you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't find a smile after Wembley, but... They're satisfied with what they've done, aren't they? Now, he's been under a lot of flack, Bob Fulton, but he's handled that, handled it, and served up a 13 that has been by far and away the better side. Ellery Hanley on the other side of the coin has got problems. It'll be interesting to see how he handles his first big problem as the number one man in, uh, in British football. Lazarus ran a decoy and Sirenan followed and then Walters able to get a pass away and Bradley Clyde up the centre and pulled down 28 metres up. With the scoreboard showing 38 to 8. Here they are again across looking for Renoff. Renoff has been very alert today, very involved. Stewart's pass to Mullins. Mullins wishes he hadn't have passed it. Harrison creams him over the top. And the last tackle is with us. So Stewart's a dummy half. A cross for Fittler, who goes for the drop goal, and uh, Annesley says why. 38 to 8, no change. And six tries in the match, two by Brett Mullins. <laughs> he's just walked past Ricky Stewart, Brad Fittler, and said, that was all right, wasn't it? I don't think he's going to get too many arguments. Eddinghausen, Clyde, Daly. Renoff, all scoring tries, Mullins two, in a total of six tries by the Australians. Great Britain have now been to Old Trafford four times, and four times they've suffered defeat. They might take it off their calendar when, uh, when future tours are here. 
I don't think so. It's a magnificent ground. And uh, I... Uh, oh, that's forward a mile. Absolutely forward a mile. It doesn't matter. There is the siren. Australia has kept the Test Series alive. And how? 38 points to 8 with 6 tries. And uh, to play Test matches overseas is certainly a privilege. And um, for me as captain, you know, to win the Ashes Series and hold the trophy aloft uh, after the game is, uh, there's, there's no equal. Seven. Out over Ian Roberts. He's OK. No, I can't. No. Quite a right, Bomber. If looks could kill, that might be just the way they feel about you, not necessarily looking. Leading the Australians out, Ron Wilkinson, the financial manager assistant. Uh, in joyful strains, then let us... And Australia has never led that statistic. This match, his first Australia-Great Britain test. And Richard starts the third and the decider. Edwards gives it back and Farrell goes back and is met by Fittler and Meninga. Meninga plays his last rugby league match today. Made the top grade in 79. Came into rep football in 1980. We wish him well on behalf of everybody in rugby league. As Farrell is driven into the ground. They're just inside their 20 metre line. And one of the better players for England has been Lee Jackson. He plays the ball now. And Edwards at Dunny Hard. Keeps it low. Drives it down for a bounce to beat Mullins. He comes off his 20-metre line. Jackson leads the procession down with Phil Clark. 33 metres out from the Australian line. Was there a knock-on? Crowd thought there might have been. Meninga got a pass away. Went off away for Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen gets rid of Betts. Comes back into Edwards. They'll put him over the touch line. Good cover by the big men, particularly the number 10, Barry McDermott. We talk about what does Sean Edwards mean to a side. This is what he means. I'm Barry McDermott. That's tremendous cover tackling. Good kick from Sean Edwards from dummy half, and I think that's what they need to do early, especially kick the Martin off his wing. They have to impose off your on the Australians, remind them just what a speed freak he is, and get him involved in this game as much as possible. He's now trying to link in outside joint. He throws the dummy, gets the ball away to off you, but there's plenty of defence. So the halfway line, and Great Britain's Robinson scurries away. Edwards now, and cut out the front rower. They find Betts. Betts got through one, but Australia's come up with it. Played by Dean Prey. Clyde with a big run. Ten metres in it. And they felt the force of the attack from Clyde. Now Roberts. Steve Walters. Stewart. Oh, Meninga's pass goes over the sideline. Australia keen to keep the ball moving early. Yeah, excellent defence there from Paul Newlove coming up quickly on Meninga. There was an overlap outside. Mullins looking to get involved with Eddinghausen. Meninga involved in the tackle on Clark. Strong tackle on the halfway. That's uh, Joint in the 13 shirt. Offer you got involved. Jackson likewise. Edwards McDermott got the ball on. Edwards again. New love is dangerous. Beats Meninga. Beats Lazarus. Taken by Mullins and Eddinghausen. Great football by the English. And that was very, very good play by Paul Newlove. He went past Meninga as though he wasn't there. He really is not worried about Meninga. He said it openly, and he thinks he can have a big game. Edwards is in trouble in back play. Well, we've got up the touch, Judge John. He's been out there for a while now, chatting with Bill Harrigan. Edwards has been cleaned up, and that's what it will be for. It'll, it'll go against the Australians, you would think. Tremendous work there from the British side, keeping the ball alive. Chris Joint particularly strong in the early exchanges. And Sean Edwards feeling up around the cheek, jawbone area. That's Dean Pay that uh, Bill Harrigan wants. I think this is going to be very, very interesting, actually. If we see what happened to Sean Edwards, did he catch him late? Oh, and yeah. That looked a little bit late to me. I wouldn't be surprised if this could be a red card job. Harrigan gives. 
gives the penalty. Dean Pay off with a caution. Tremendous tour for Dean Pay. Australia could ill afford to have to do what Great Britain did at Wembley. 12 men for 55 minutes. They were equal to the task, and ironically, the man that caused all of that is the man on the end of that. Yeah, that's a cheap shot there from Dean Pay. Unexpected from a player of his calibre. He's tough enough without going for headshots like that. Andy Farrell will take the kick. It's not a particularly easy one. It is centre field. Only 41 metres out. Won't this lift the side if it goes over? Because they have started very well. Only kicked one goal in four previous tests. That makes it two. Two nil in favour of Great Britain with Harrison playing it. Midway through the set of tackles to follow the restart. This is Jackson. I think we've got to be quite happy with the way Great Britain started. They seem to be more confident. They're taking the Australians on. They're running with the ball and they're keeping the ball alive. Edwards now. Sending it down into Wishart's corner. And the Steeler comes away. 124 points for the, uh, the tour. Just outside his own 20-metre line. Clyde. Let's not to forget that the Great Britain side, they started in a similar vein at Old Trafford. Once they had a, a try scored on them, their heads went down, their performance went out the window. So Steve Walters gets away from the marker. Fickler it is that takes the tackle. They're getting close to halfway. 2-0 in favour of Great Britain. Stewart now. Sending it down across this beautifully prepared strip at Ellen Road. It goes in touch in goal, so it's a 20-metre restart. It is quite greasy out there. Quite a bit of rain overnight. If they take the tap, question mark on Australia being back the 10. And Martin Offia came in to take it out. It's rather unlike Offia, particularly on his first two test performances. Hunt now. Yeah, someone's had a word in his ear, and I'd say it was Ellery Hanley to run straight with the football and get involved. Robinson out of dummy half. That's three good rucks there. Alan Hunt got in for the second one. The speedy back's just taking some work off the forwards. Clark in the number six shirt today. A move that was rumoured. It was one of those many rumours in rugby league that turned out to be spot on. Robinson. The last. And as you can see, about five metres into Australia's territory. Edwards' kick is high to Eddinghausen. Well, were they back the 10? Were they onside? Good kick, though, by Edwards. I think it's interesting, Ray, to see the different tactics that Great Britain are using. They're keeping the ball alive. Obviously, Harry Rennie said, we must attack Australia. We can't defend for 80 minutes. And they went uh, in over the top on Roberts. Not unexpectedly, Roberts with that nasty gash in the eye. A little test out for that. Stewart takes a late tackle over the top by Edwards. And a penalty goes now to Australia. The British lying on the tackled player. It was Lee Jackson, the offender. And he'll get away with what he can, Lee Jackson. He's really been very good for Great Britain in slowing the play of the ball down, getting out before acceptances from the marker position. Putting a lot of pressure on the Australian first receiver. Lazarus now. Been in fine form. Finding that form through plenty of match practice given to him by coach Bob Fulton. Clyde. Wrapped up around the neck area. Great Britain have not won a series on the home soil for 35 years. As Roberts is put down in a strong tackle by Betts. Walters now. Stewart. Meninga back across the ruck. Pay. They've got to go up with Dean Pay. 40 metres out from the line. Fittler now. Looks for support. Daly is with him. Daly away from one and pulled down over there by Robinson. Just outside the 20 metre line. A tame start really to the test by comparison with the first two. The bomb from Stewart. Connolly was very good. Tremendous.
conscious effort under the high ball. I think he's the best player in Great Britain, is Gary Connolly. Amazing to think that this is his 17th test, still yet to score a test try. That's a little bit of a problem. I think what we've seen it also, Peter. Look at the confidence, the way the kid goes up for the ball. That is his position, and that's why he's not the number one. Meantime, Alan Hunt is in trouble in back play. He sustained some kind of a leg injury, and this is Farrell now. Farrell in 12, joint in 13. Oh, Harrison! Ian Roberts again was the, the victim there. He went in for Dennis Betts earlier, came off the worst for wear. That was a, a, a better one for the Great Britain side as Eddinghausen again perfectly positioned. Goes centre field, straightens up. Can't get under the tackle of Chris Joint. I think it's very interesting, Peter, the way both sides are actually going in and tackling and respecting the ball. There's not many loose passes, and really Great Britain have started off tremendously well. Walters now, 2-0 in favour of Great Britain. Through to Daly. Now Fittler, now Daly on the run around. High pass to Mullins, takes the sting out of it. Mullins swarmed over by Edwards and by McDermott. wide, scheming and probing, Rinoff looking to score tries in each of the tests that have been done a couple of times in rugby league history Stewart's pass a beauty to Daly Daly shows it, Mullins is with it Meninga ran the decoy Mullins throws the pass in desperation Connolly is tackled 10 metres out from his own line and Ken Betts goes away with it and Ian Roberts is in all sorts of trouble out there no idea where he is. Bill Harrigan gets the Australian defence for being inside the 10, and rightly so. Steve Walters will be called out here and spoken to. Alan Hunt looks as though he will leave the field for Great Britain, so some injury problems for both teams early on. Yes, Hunt has left the field on the far side, limped off. And this is going to be very interesting. What the... Centres, five eighths, and halfbacks on the bench, so it would seem that and a change here, Ray, just quickly for Australia. It looks as though that Ian Roberts will go to the blood bin. Greg Florimo comes in. There's some blood coming from the nose of Ian Roberts. Two enormous hits on him from opposing forwards. Looking at that, Peter, he looks as though he's in a bad way. That was two tremendous tackles on Ian Roberts. He made one himself and one on when Dennis Betts, and he lost on both accounts. In the interim, Powell, Darrell Powell has gone on into the centres, taking the place of um, Alan Hunt. Now this is Farrell. 40 metres out from the line as Edwards goes across the back and Connolly is with it now. 2-0, a penalty goal earlier on for Farrell. Almost 15 minutes gone in the game. And Great Britain looking very good. And it was about this time in the game that they let it get away from them at Old Trafford. As Jackson kicks, Eddinghausen has been kept very busy. Little mistake by Eddinghausen, he's in trouble. And it'll be a line drop out to restart. Well, when you kick the football, you're looking for a result, and that's exactly what Great Britain got there. Eddinghausen has been very, very safe. A little bit of a fumble there, but he was still able to clean up. But the chase, that was great. New Love led the charge. Edwards helped. Another set of six now for... Victorious over Australia. That win has come on the foundation of a good kicking game. The kicking game today has been quite sound with one minor blemish. Played by Farrell. Clark lets it go. Edwards pushes on. Dermot is with it. Fittler tries to bring him down, but he has to require assistance from Dean Fay and Mal Meninga. That's the 20-metre line as away from that point goes Offia. Jackson pulled out. Offia stays there, a dummy half. Edwards, Clark, Edwards. The run around for Betts. And Betts. Offia again. Robinson. Robinson, very dangerous, close. Mullins and Pay make the tackle. Great Britain with a chance. Edwards back, Jackson dummies, then kicks, came off Australia, they didn't play at it, Betts is with it. And there's a lot of people here booing Bill Arrigan, the decision is dead right, it came off a Great Britain player, the, the ball played the man. No question about Harrigan's ruling, it was spot on. 
out to the 20 metre line. Walters now serves it up for Clyde. Australia very much with their back to the wall. Yeah, I think that puts them in good stead, but Ray, they, they needed to survive that onslaught. Chance here, Peter Meninga for Eddinghausen, but the pendulum swings back for New Love. I think we've got a very worry, Ray, about the way Mal Meninga's being made to rush with his passes. That's two balls to Andrew Eddinghausen. That was a chance, and that was a bad ball. Played by Clark. 15 as Powell. 5 8 in the first test. On for Hunt now. Australia mistake gives Great Britain another chance. Clark. Walters over the top. Play underneath. That's how close they are. Edwards. Joint. Still able to get it away. Offia looks for his 27th. But it's a penalty. Uh, Harrigan has obviously called held there. It'll be difficult for the players to pick up some calls out there because it is deafening. There's been a fair bit of time elapsed there. Chris Joint. Eternity that players are allowed to in England to get the pass away. And I think at club football that would have been allowed. Lazarus thunders it up to them, but met by a gleeful McDermott. Pay now, a similar reception. Through Stewart. And now with Daly. Daly looks to open them up, gets it back on the inside. Greg Florimo is with it right on the halfway line. Clyde. Straight and hard. 40 metre line. Stewart. Long pass for Meninga. Mullins is coming up. Meninga gets away from one. Straight over the top of Offia. Farrell cleans him up on the 20 metre line. Five tackles gone. Mullins is the dummy half. I think Stewart wants to run the... Now he's shaping the kick. It'll go across field. Big kick by Stewart. Wishart's after it, but it's too big. So the turnover just outside the British 20-metre line. I really thought that was a good chance for Australia to run the football on the last tackle. They had a, a big line, a lot of numbers there, players who could have run angles and, and dummies. And then when it breaks down, do something at the end of it. Bob Fulton, he knows he's got a test match on his hands. Good ball to Lee Jackson. They keep it alive, 20 out. Clark. Clark. Hammered into the ground by Florimo. A pat on the back for Florimo from Clyde. And, uh, I'll just see down in front of me, Hunter's come back out on, on crutches. Now it's Farrell. There he is there, Alan Hunt. A crutch to help him back to the bench so he can watch the match. Meantime, Edwards... And now Powell. First representative offered to Great Britain by the Sheffield Club. Edwards back and away for Connolly. Connolly's kick in midfield is high. I don't know about the purpose behind it. Connolly flies up for it, then right back and down for Australia. Renoff will play it. I think you'd have to worry about them tactics. Obviously, the kick was going nowhere, and Australia were not going to play the ball. They realised that they was going to get the handover. And really, Great Britain, Peter, seemed to have taken Australia on more in this game, running with the ball and keeping it alive more. Yeah, they've been very physical. It is out from the line. Renoff now. Renoff tries to beat the marker. Throws the ball down to Eddinghausen. A good tackle on him. Then Clyde. Back for Mullins, who started it all. Mullins is tackled on five. Ricky Stewart opting to throw to the 5-8. It actually got a touch in flight, this kick. You'll see as he chips over the top, a Great Britain hand. That popped it up nicely for Laurie Daly. And then it was a simple task for him to catch and step back on the inside of Gary Conley. This is the last tackle. It was set up by a good burst up the middle from Eddinghouse and off a of Mullins pass. A little kick over the top. I think it's Newlove who got a touch. And then, well, Gary Conley had no chance. Laurie Daly... One hand player keeps his eye on the ball and does the correct thing. Players who want to play for the country. This is very, very important that the heads do not drop down. This will be his 50th goal on tour. And Wishart, he adds the extras. Australia leading now by six points to two at Allen Road. Walters away now for pay and he puts a step into his work. Almost put him through the gap. Play back for Steve Walters to dummy to Florimo, who offered him a decoy. And then Walters runs into the driving shoulder of Harrison. 
cross for Stewart. Now he gets it on the boot, and that'll find touch. Rolling just over the line at the 10-metre point. And the scrum will pack. 6-2, Australia. 124 points for Rod Wishart now, and 50 goals on tour. A total of 124, I might add, in this is only his ninth game, so his, his averages are very good. Schofield has come to the sidelines. Is it and uh, or, or hands it away from dummy half passes long and accurately out to Florimo then back for Renoff they're really keeping it alive this is Dean Pay he's pulled down by Daryl Powell Walters now gives it up for Fittler Fittler taken in a great tackle by Carl Harrison Walters in again to acting half away now for Stewart the run around is on with Daly. Calls Meninga in. Now he calls Eddinghausen in. Eddinghausen lost it over the head of Edwards. Daly is with it. Daly runs around Lazarus's uh, big frame. He's tackled eight metres out from the English line. Way now for Fittler to give on. Pay is with it. Pay for Florimo. North Sydney, five eighths tackled. This is the last. Dangerously close to giving a penalty with Schofield. Now, Stewart has an intercept coming up. Ophia, Ophia, held by Daly. Gets it away for Jackson. Now for New Love. And he goes to ground 25 out from his own line. Oh, that's danger. Floating the pass out, Martin Ophia's way. Forcing Ricky Stewart reacted the quickest. He threw the pass and knew there was danger. Of course, open spaces, it is six points. Chris Joint comes to the blind side. Phil Clark has left the field. I think if, uh, if Martin Afraid had achieved that ball, I think Ricky Stewart surely would have been better putting that ball into the corner with a little grubber kick. Farrell taken in a brick-like tackle by Renoff. Edwards on for Robinson coming in. Five tackles gone almost to the halfway. Down 6-2. Great Britain. Edwards across the ground for Eddinghausen. Andrew playing in uh, his 24th test today. Australia then comfortable as Phil Clark is assisted from the ground. A change that was rumoured to be made at around about the 20 minutes, uh, the, the 20th minute of the game has come unfortunately through injury. Exactly as the script suggested not the injury part of it though. A little high shot there from Carl Harrison. He's been very good this afternoon, Harrison. But that one was a little bit wayward on Bradley Clyde. Centre field, halfway mark. Walters out of dummy half, picks up five metres. I think Bill Adigan there really could have picked Sean Edwards up, you know. He just never tried to get back the ten metres. Stewart now, keeping them guessing. Mullins goes through. Will he get the bounce? Connolly is there. Mullins has got it. Gets the pass away. Edwards is with it for England. That was miraculous stuff by Mullins. Played by Edwards now, close to his own line. Connolly driven into the turf. Yeah, that just shows the tremendous combination, doesn't it? And really, it's up to the, the blind side wing or the far winger to react to that. Florimo's picked up a little bit of an injury in that attempted tackle. But Jason Robinson needed to react much quicker than that. Get across and cover. And Andrew Farrell takes it outside the 20 metre line. Youngest forward ever to represent Great Britain is Farrell. Jackson, Edwards, Schofield. They want it out wide. Good pass from New Love. Offia's outside him. Ball came off the Ninga. It'll be a Great Britain three. And it was a timely arm from Mel Meninga. Paul Newlove looking, looking to position Martin off here on the inside. He committed two defenders. So it was fortunate that Mel was able to knock the ball down. Good ball from Gary Schofield. But did you see the ball from Gary Schofield? That's how important he is to a Great Britain side. That's important. He keeps the ball moving along. He'll surely give Martin a fire plenty of running chances. Wow. They've <laughs> got every right to. I Great think... Britain should have the feed. Well, I would think it definitely came off an Australian hand. Surely it came off Meninga. Meninga knocked the ball in the in the touch line, but you've got to play on, you've got to play to the whistle. I can't imagine what's happened here in the communication breakdown oh. between touch judge and referee. Well, this is on the touch judge. He's saying that there, there was a knock-on from the Great Britain side as Daly goes through. No way knowing that. 
He'll be lucky to get home alive from Ellen Road, this touch judge. Clyde now. And the rain tumbles down. Florimo, he's okay again. Injured a few minutes back. Lazarus. Good yards. 21 out from the line. Stewart. They come back to the blind side. Fittler wants it. He's gone inside. Harrison picks him up. Lazarus is there. Unloads like a halfback. Mullins flicks it. Daly comes back. They're working up the corridor. Now it's back for Pay. Held by Connolly. Good defence by the fullback. Australia 10 metres out from the line. Five gone. Will they go through the hand? Stewart. Puts the kick in. Off he goes back to clean it up. Can't get back into the field of play. Meninga smashed him in goal. I think Big Mal Meninga there wanted to prove a point. A lot of people have been writing him off over here, but there's nothing wrong with this good kick and a good chase. A lovely ball. Just look at this onto a fire. He's not going anywhere. Get out of that, son. Well, it's good work from Meninga and Eddinghausen to get there because they were very deep. They were looking to run the football. So the kick from Ricky Stewart was a touch unexpected. Isn't he having a game, Laurie Daly? A selfish Laurie Daly is the best Laurie Daly. It means he'll take them on himself and then look to pass. It's a whopping drop kick, which Mullins makes a meal of. And then Mullins comes back. A couple of metres into Great Britain's area as assistant coach and coach put their heads together. Clyde. What a magnificent toiler he is. Walters running more from dummy half than at any time in the series. Stewart for Meninga. Meninga has scored a try in each of the deciders in the last eight years as it goes across for Fitler. Now Stewart, and then he dummies and beats just about everybody, including himself. Ricky Stewart playing it. Steve Walters precisely for Fitler. And then he gets a pass down, it's on the ground, it's play on. Daly, back for Pay. Pay gets it away. It's gone to ground, Eddinghausen put a boot to it. Robinson's on it for England. I think Australia now are just beginning to turn the screw, the screw a little bit, but you've got to be very, very impressed by Bradley Clyde and, and, Stu, and Fickler. They're having a tremendous game, Peter. Well, not for the first time, Alex, the back row is very good. Again, Great Britain will have come up with a mistake 10 metres out in the rain line. Here's a chance. Florimo cleans up. Florimo will play up 22 metres out. Off of the tackler. Lazarus, the ball carrier. Half an hour of the game gone. Australia 6, Great Britain 2. Is there another try coming for Australia? Pay gets it away. Stewart gets in behind them. Then gets it on for Renoff. Rinoff, he can score a try. Can he score here? He's short. Two metres. Put away by Powell. And Schofield hangs on in the tackle. Wisher, Stewart. A catch and pass in one motion. Florimo, Meninga. Meninga comes to New Love. Back on the 20 metre line. Fittler. Brad Fittler, a youngster who's uh, been in the thick of test football for four years now. Really has honed his skills. Daly, across for Clyde. He gets it out the back. Wishart tries to dive on it. Edwards dives. A penalty here to Great Britain. Holding the Great Britain players away from the ball. Very sloppy work there from the Aussies. Rod Wishart looking to, to get his body between the chaser and the ball instead of diving on it. Sonny Nicholas has come on in 17. And that looks like Barry McDermott leaving the field. He's come from some adversity, Barry McDermott. He only has one eye. Lost his right eye in a, an air gun accident when he was 16. And it's a fair effort to make it through to test football. I think it's very interesting also, Ray, to bring Sonny Nittle on. This is a very, very good tactical change because Nittle is a fiery forward and he's got a lot of pace. So here they are crossing the halfway line with Sonny Nickel. 
who came back from a three-match suspension in the match against St. Helens. Farrell. Fiddler around the legs. Dean Pay over the top. Jackson goes for a run from dummy half. He carries him five metres outside the 20. Off here a dummy half. Across for Schofield. On for Edwards. The run around and then the long ball. And Powell did well. Robinson is with it. Robinson gets it on. Connolly is there. Connolly floats it. Now with Farrell. New love. Australia's ball inside the 20 metre line. Fittler is to play it. And if you're looking across, that was tremendous cover again. Meninga on the, you know, cleaning it up. He's, he saved really two searching tries, Meninga. Farrell outside, new love. Watch Meninga come across here. He knows he's in the right place and cleans it up. And in the meantime, Lee Jackson has suffered an injury. It was a fend from Laurie Daly, and I think Jackson might have taken it in the eye. A scrum win for Britain. His joint is tackled. And the Australian 20 metre line. They queue up. Edwards floats it nicely for Connolly. Henry Connolly. In the way from Dean Pay eventually. It comes on from Mickle through Edwards and out for Schofield. And a nice ball inside for Harrison, but Harrison around the legs he finds Lazarus. They come away again through Dennis Betts. Close to the line. Chance to grab a half-time lead. Schofield, good with the ball in his hands, and wide for Connolly. The pass, though, goes over the sideline. It's very, very interesting, though, Ray. Since Gary Schofield has come on the field, he's moving the ball out wide, he's keeping the ball to the flanks, and really he's giving Great Britain a lot more running chances. Yeah, the defensive work of the Australians has been first class. They were put under pressure early in the game. Came through that. Uses Wishart this time. He's seen precious little of it, but Wishart. Most of the work has gone to Eddinghausen's side. And Florimo. Fittler. Very feeble defence by Great Britain. Australia has got down to the halfway line and beyond. On three tackles. In fact... Four tackles have expired as it goes across to Stewart and Clyde aims the attack down the center of the ground. That's the fifth now. Walters on for Stewart to keep low. He's weighted it pretty well. Off he up. Has got Eddinghausen on him. He beats Eddinghausen. He's away from play. Eddinghausen chases. The ball comes out and Bill Harrigan penalizes Eddinghausen. And I think that was the right decision. There's no doubt about it. E.T. just caught the ball. It was an accident, but I know you cannot knock the ball out. Yeah, that, that makes it a tough decision, doesn't it? Any, anybody pulled up for this infringement, it's like, you shouldn't be penalised for an accident. That's exactly what you've said. And this may well be the most crucial part of the game here. Not long out from half-time. If Great Britain can go in just the four points down, or even score before then, they're well in this game. Another six points to the Australians, psychologically, might just put Great Britain away here. So, they've really got to rise to the occasion. Sonny Nickel hasn't done so, he's dropped the ball. Renoff is with it now on the left of the ground. Wishart looking to come inside. This is Sonny Nickel losing it. Australia went quickly to the left. They're coming back to the right now. Meninga is with it. Mullins is there. Offier and Jackson combined to put the Australian fullback down. Meninga, Stewart, long pass. Misses Daly, picks up Clyde. Clyde on for Florimo. He puts it on the boot. Robinson puts it into the crowd. Well, did Florimo kick too soon? You've got to think that was a chance miss because I think Flodermo, two men outside him, Ray, really holding the ball. All he's got to do here is hold the ball. A beautiful ball off Clyde here. Flodermo, he's got to draw the man. He panics a little bit, slips the ball in, Jason Robinson. And 6 2 to the Australians. A big drop kick brought back by Wishart. Almost 20 metres.
Florimo again. He's been called into the last two tests very early on. Fittler. Walters. Stewart. I wouldn't be surprised if he might take a shot at drop goal. He's been pushing players into the centre of the ground. Here's Daly. Nine metres out, five gone. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad play at all here. If you can't pick up any more, just take the point. Here he is, Stewart. Goes for it. And he gets it. A further point to the Australian total. 7-2 coming up to half-time. And what a very important score that might turn out to be. Very intelligent play from Ricky Stewart. There was nothing else on. He was under a little bit of pressure and just did the exactly right thing. Laurie Daly again coming straight. Kept the play close. Hit Steve Walters from the restart. Florimo picks up inside his 20-metre mark. Florimo now. Ricky Stewart, of course. One of the six Raiders in the Australian test side. is Fittler. Tries to open them up. Fittler's been great on this tour. You've got to be admire this fella. He's not only a great forward, he just gives so much confidence to the other lads. But I get a little feeling now that when I... Daly, a freakish try. Daly put himself in a position to catch the rebound, to register the first four-pointer. This is how it looks. A little bit out from the pass. A little kick over the top. I think it's Newlove who got a touch. And then, well, Gary Connolly had no chance. The Australian team They've had a little bit more possession. Sending it down, and Lazarus brings it back. 7-2, Australia leading then. First tackle of the second half. Match getting underway in the second half at 20 minutes to four local time. Stewart, Pay, out and beyond the 30-metre line. Walters. Roberts, as tough as they come, Ian Roberts. 40 metres out now from the line, their own line. This Stewart purposely puts it down inside the 20 metre line, not looking for touch, not looking for anything really other than to put Connolly in the corner. And that, of course, is the best place to defend from. Now Robinson comes off his right wing. Now that was a very intelligent first set of six there from Australia. You want to start well, a couple of simple rucks. They've used Mel Meninga very nicely on the blind side a couple of times. Good strong tackle there from Lazarus, gets a pack from Roberts. What's the news from the dressing rooms, uh, Chris, Chris Bombalus? Well, Ray, uh, Bob Fulton wanted the boys to uh, cut down their mistakes, cut down the turnovers. Ball control was the main thing he issued. He said 40 minutes to go and we're, we're taking the Ashes back to Australia. In the other dressing room in Great Britain, well, the first 10 minutes are crucial, according to Ellery Hanley. Uh, keep Australia pinned down in their own uh, quarter. And, uh, yes, he admitted they were on top in the latter stages of the second half, but he said the signs are there and they're uh, in with a great chance. OK, Chris, Mullins it is with the ball now, 40 metres out from his own line. Fittler, who had a magnificent first half. Ooh, runs into a corner of the tackle from Farrell. Roberts, beyond the halfway. Australians, 38 minutes away from taking the Ashes, which they own, back to Australia again. 21 years they've held them. As it comes to the left to Stewart to give on for Daly the try scorer. Fittler is with it. Mullins, Mullins strides into open pasture. Rinner put it on the boot. It was the best thing he could do. It was down around the boot laces. Oh, very poor pass there from Brett Mullins. Great work to slide through the gap, but an atrocious pass back inside for Steve Renoff at, at his boot laces. I think you'd have to be worried about this. This has got to be four points on the board. I don't think Mullins even looped he was inside in. The ball just went. It was a panic pass. That could have been it right there. So Harrison now. Met and put away by Glenn Lazarus. That's the 40-metre line where they played it. Edwards is now with it. Coming back in is Farrell, but he runs into the forwards. And they drop him heavily, Walters and Pay. Robinson sees what looked like an opening. Five tackles gone against Britain. Back for Schofield. And Mullins has got Wishart with him. He's outside the 20. 
He loses the ball. But referee Harrigan is playing the knock on. I think Ray Bird, I think the, the crowd are shouting because he's not played the advantage, but he'd blown the whistle, he didn't know what was going on, and he was advised by the touch judge. Drummond go across to New Love. Schofield. Pow. More like a forward than a 5 8 or a centre. Jackson gives it on, Harrison's with it, back for Jackson, now for Edwards. Crosses the 20 metre line, floats it onto the chest of Betts. Betts taken by Renoff, 11 metres out from the line. Robinson away from dummy half, scored a, a try from here up at Wigan. Got a pass out, Jackson, the ball knocked down by Australia, I think. It'll be, I believe, a Great Britain feed. Yes, that'll be the case, touched by, I think, Ian Roberts. And it was a timely touch as well. Good second base play. He can play this kid, Jason Robinson. Kept the ball alive to Jackson. Uh, in fact, it wasn't well. There's was an Australian diving there. You do not get a better attacking opportunity than this right now. Well, I think if Great Britain won have any chance of the Ashes, they've got to capitalise on this. Joint. Joint. Intercepted by Maninka. Well, we will know later that... The number of times he puts that big right hand out and it sticks. It may well have been an Ashes decider. You'll never know until the, the siren sounds behind us. He's batting a thousand with the intercepts. It's more like a baseball glove than a hand, Big Mel. Clyde will play it now. Well, keep in mind that to make the intercept, you've got to go up out of the line. So you've thrown all the eggs into one basket as Lazarus. Takes it to the halfway line. And hasn't he enjoyed this, uh, this trip, Lazarus? He's got better game by game. He's doing a tremendous lot of work. Walters did well. Stewart supports. 30 metres out, five gone. Fittler wants it on the right, but the sting has gone out of the attack. Fittler comes back, puts in a little kick. Mullins goes after it, but it's straight down the throat of Connolly. And Connolly tries to get away from Daly. Linga had to come in from the centres to make the tackle. And now Offia. Away from the clutches of Clyde. Pulled down by Renoff and Stewart. I think you get the feeling there that Martin Afayad is the man who really can win the game, but uh, is he going to get any chances to win the game? Powell is tackled. Just inside the 30 metre line. Great Britain getting buoyed on by this enormous crowd. Good pass. Edwards uses off here. Edwards supports, crosses the halfway. New Love is with it. He beats one. The crowd goes up and New Love goes down. Eddinghausen, the tackler. Jackson, Edwards. Now for Schofield. The crowd, listen to them. Schofield across. Farrell, taken by Rinoff, gets it away. Connolly is with it. Roberts has got him. He'll pass. He does. Robinson's with it. Over the 20. Runs into the defence. Five gone. Australia. It's with Edwards. Edwards rolls it in behind. Oh, beautiful take. But it'll be a line drop out. Look at the Australian bench. Oh, they know how important that take was from Andrew Eddinghausen under pressure. Great attacking play from Great Britain. Tremendous defence from the Australians. That's what Test football is all about. ET never took his eye off the ball. Good chase from Neil Oven Jackson. Tremendous football all around. And this is what wins Test matches. What a magnificent take by Etchendowson that was. He'd get a game with the Australian Test side at cricket. Well, sheer excitement. A beautiful part about being at Ellen Road. I hope you're feeling it back there. It was here at, at Ellen Road Live. It is just incredible as the crowd gets behind their team and Offia is tackled 40 metres out from the Australian line. Yeah, and I think you've got to say that Great Britain are obviously taking this game to Australia. They know they're still in with a chance. I think the next 10 minutes is very, very important. They're keeping the ball alive and they're putting Australia under some pressure. Edwards, easy yards out from dummy half, but a sad ending on the end of the shoulder of Dean Pay. Now Schofield switches the point of the attack. They come across with joint using Powell, and Powell put into the ground by Renoff. Pat on the back from Wishart. Good tackle by Renoff. Now Robinson uses Sonny Nickel. 
they've gone. Schofield takes it straight up to them. Runs to the defence line. Edwards, here's a chance for Meninga over there. But it's picked up by Offia. Offia passes. Robinson is with it. They're still on the last. They get it away. It's touch football at the moment. It's gone across for Farrell. He rolls it into the end goal. Wishart. A desperate save by the number five. <laughs> Rod Wishart has had to come from the far wing to cover that one up, and just as well he did. And there you can see the appreciation from the fans for both teams. Great work from Great Britain again on the last tackle, keeping the ball alive. Schofield going to the line. Good work here by Farrell. The little kick in, he knew it was the last. Lazarus is there, Mullins is there, but Wishart was the main man. I wonder, Peter, what do you think this could be? He's back on the first, almost to the 20-metre line. Kangaroo showing nerves of steel at the moment. Harrison. Second tackle. I'll count them out. Edwards. Farrell. Joint. Jackson. Edwards. Still the third tackle. That's it. Clyde makes the tackle with Fettler. Two of our best defensemen at marker. Front and back. Nickel. On the fourth. That's an easy play. Now the fifth. Edwards, a bad pass. Schofield. Across Betts. Out wide as Powell. That's five. They went nowhere. They went backwards from the first tackle. And I think the nice thing about this, way that Australia have not lost the line. They've not left a share for the line. They've kept it there and kept it at Britain. Even when they've had the ball, they a lot of pressure. Well, that has been one of the, I would imagine most refreshing, heartwarming segments of the game for Bob Fulton. They withstood raid after raid, the Kangaroos. And they've come back now with the football, 25 out from their own line. As Dean Pay takes it up the centre, 12 metres short of halfway. And Great Britain have thrown just about everything they've got at Australia. Roberts looking to unload. Walters, Sonny Nickel puts him away, Brasher is on, Eddinghausen is off, as Roberts goes out from dummy half, takes it into English territory, then throws a pass down to his captain, Meninga put down on five, Stewart will get the ship back deep into Britain territory, he runs with it himself Ricky, throws the pass, Mullins scoops it up, floats it out, knocked back with inside, brushes with him, the ball to ground, it came off the boot of Mullins I think, and it's back with uh, the Great Britain fullback Gary Connolly. I think that was a good decision by Bill Alligan, I mean he's got the total and he's letting the, the play the advantage, it was the right decision but again I was just beginning to wonder would Great Britain fall for the sucker punch, they've been under a lot of pressure, they've been attacking Australia and was they become a little bit vulnerable and that was Rod Wishart who fell for the sucker punch a little bit here, he did a good job to Clean up Gary Connolly. And just wanted to hold the Great Britain fullback down a little bit too long. Pushed him back down there. That's the penalty. It has been spoken to by Bill Harrigan. So the second ball comes onto the ground. Lee Jackson taking the tap. Sonny Nickel up to the halfway mark. There's Andrew Eddinghausen. He's got an ankle problem. Edwards across for Betts and now for Farrell. Farrell loves to work out wide. Big lad, he loses the ball. A penalty goes to Great Britain. Edwards moves in to calm Farrell down. Hanley wired for sound and sending out the instructions. I, I noticed that Bobby Goulding is limbering again and I did see McDermott doing likewise, so he must have been a blood bin, that's all I can think of. Well, it must have been a blood bin, but that's a very, very important decision. Do you kick a goal? Do you take your chance and go for a try? I think Great Britain at this moment in time are going for broke. Edwards turning it in. Bets the second rower. He puts it down. It'll be play on. Six more. Edwards on. Schofield's with it. Schofield tries to step. First tackle now. 20 metres out from the Australian line. New love. Turns it in. Jackson swamped by Lazarus and Fittler. Second tackle, an appeal from the crowd, away to Edwards now, 
Edwards running towards Brasher's corner. Met there and pulled down by Daly. Third tackle, five out from the line. 7-2, they're trailing. Schofield with a long ball. He's out wide for Powell. Off he has come off his wing. Powell has tackled, the fourth is gone. 15 out from the line. Off here a dummy half. Robinson runs it. The fifth is gone. They're 10 metres out from the line. Now, play back to Offia. Given on for Schofield. The bomb is high. It hasn't got a lot of depth in it. Up they go and down they come. Australia's got it. Brett Mullis, magnificent under pressure. And I don't think we can say during all the series as Australia have been putting as much pressure as this. Really great Britain throwing everything at him. But you've got to be honest, Australia looked rock solid deep behind. Pressure now. This arena. It won't be daunting for Tim Brasher. He had a taste of Wembley as the fullback in 92. Roberts lumbers up to them, gets it away. Walters, Steve has run more today than ever I've seen him, I think. Look at those good yards by the number nine. Five gone for Australia. Stewart to the right. Then keeps them guessing before putting up a towering kick. Stewart rakes, or not Stewart, it came back to Stewart though. He runs it, he looks for support, the pass goes on, Brasher is with it, he shovels it away, now it's Daly, Daly rolls it in, and Connolly is there to take it. They're both sides really throwing everything into this game. They know that they must be positive to win. The thing is that the top level sport anyway, Pressure must be converted into points, and that's what Great Britain were unable to do at the far end. And then Langer wondering whether he'll get a chance to display his vast array of skills in the course of this game as Offia beats a couple, throws a path back to Edwards under pressure, not going anywhere at the moment. So now Nicholas is in the gap. Nicholas is up to the halfway. A pistol with Mullins now. He rounds him up pretty quickly, really. 40 metres out from the Aussie line. I think a lot of people were wondering then, could that have been Martin of Fire? Because I think if it had been, it'd have been good night and goodbye. Farrell put away a shoulder by Lazarus. 30 metres out from the line. On the third tackle, Schofield tries to get a, a kick and chase in for himself, but Australia comes up with it. Very silly kick there from Gary Schofield. It wasn't the last. It was a poor kick execution. Ian Roberts batting the ball back. Really, they, they had some momentum up there. You can't give the football over so cheaply. So Australia bring it out to the 40-metre line. Walters, one of the stars. Lazarus very running very, very strongly. Proving uh, energy sapping for the defence to pull him down. Walters, look at Steve Walters! Beautiful side step and a swerve. He's away from the number nine and he's pulled down about nine metres out from the line. And I think the little man really enjoyed that. He's having a tremendous game, Steve Walters. Stewart now. Players all round him. Daly floats it out. Wishart, Wishart. He'll score. Wishart gets it down. And Australia lead by 11 points to two. And it was almost a slow motion try there. Steve Wallace set it up. He's covered more ground than Burke and Wills. Straight up the middle of the ruck. And there the Australian fans, they are ecstatic. The tide has turned, and I go back to the Gary Schofield little chip over the top. It was Great Britain who had the momentum at that, at that time. And it all turned around. What is this the test decided? Is this the one? It's a very, very important ball. Still needed some scoring. It's a good ball off Lottie Daly here. He keeps his cool at all times, this guy. Wishart does likewise. Well, the Kangaroos, the scoreboard refusing to put up the new scoreline. 11-2, though. Row Ellen Road scoreboard shows a 7-2. A protest by the counter. Wishart. Got it off the boot, OK, but it's well wide. But he probably feels satisfied. We'll take a break. We're back in a moment. Try Australia leading 11 points to two. And I don't know in the three tests that I've seen a more exciting passage of play than the last, say, 15 minutes with the attack of Great Britain being repelled 
and then Australia turns around and scores the try. Well, that grabbing did put Australia under tremendous amount of pressure, but I did say I hope they're not going to fall for the sucker punch. It was a great break by Ricky Stewart, and once that had happened, Australia got a little bit of confidence, knew the try was going to be very important, and did just that. Stewart now, as uh, he takes command of just about anything that he contests, and really he becomes so often Peter the forgotten man, Ricky Stewart. He guides them around the park and his work sometimes goes unnoticed, but he's the man, he's the conductor. Well, we were having a look through the stats before this game and we were very surprised to learn that Ricky Stewart has not scored a test try, but hasn't he been involved in some and some crucial ones as well? We have to think back four years. Now again today, he was involved in the final movement that has seen Wishart score wide out. The guy that I'm very happy for is Ian Roberts to see him back out there. Had to leave the second test very early on with a bad cut to the eye. He's had a lot of bad luck through his career. And even at, when he left the field in the first half here, you had to wonder whether he'd be back out there. I think you've got to worry about what he's made of, Roberts. He's, he's got to be made of Grant because he's taken yeah. tremendous hits on this tour and he's got up as if he's never had a problem. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Uh, i tell you what it is, it's a great show of confidence from his coach, Bob Fulton, to put him back, considering what Florimo was doing. Yeah, because we, we've got one or two Australian forwards really knocking and, and standing in the wings. Beasley Lightning, Jason Smith, he's had a tremendous two, and he thinks, what have I got to do to get on this side? This is not over, though. 11-2, nine points to their front, and Robinson, Robinson, oh, just overrunning the... The ball carrier was Lee Jackson. The last tackle is with Great Britain. Betts floats it out, looking for Offia. He puts the kick in, but Wishart will go across. He'll let it bounce. Oh, they, call, they collide. Side. It's a penalty. Off Wishart, on to Daly. Well, I think he looks a little bit uh, me. It cannot be me, but I think this was a very bad call between the two of them. Lottie Daly, Rod Wishart's ball. Who's having the ball? No call, obviously. And the referee, Bill Harrigan, is dead right. He was offside. And the Great Britain side are kicking for goal here. They're going to make the score 11-4. That surprises me. I'd, I'd take the tap. See Wishart paying the penalty for allowing the ball to, to bounce. Farrell shouldn't have any trouble with this conversion attempt. But it still puts them seven in arrears. That means they've still got to score twice. Well, I cannot believe this because early on in the game when there was 7-2, we refuse to kick a goal. I just cannot believe at this moment in time there must be some a lot of confidence running through the Great Britain camp because personally I think we need to score a try and I don't think a goal kick's going to be good enough. 18 minutes of the match remaining, 18 minutes of the test and the series remaining. Farrell from right in front, he took he took quite a divot, but the scoreboard changes now 11-4 Australia. <laughs> And 17 minutes of time remaining, and still Ellery Hanley hasn't put Bobby Golding or Goulding into the match. In fact, it was when he came on at Wembley that he turned the match around together with Jonathan Davis, and I'm surprised that Hanley hasn't thrown uh, Goulding into the match at this point. Yeah, he should have been in the starting lineup, Ray. So it's, a, it's a late start for him. Not long to go. He's, the, he's their most creative player. He, he's got to be there. And now, with the, that scoreline, doesn't it add some importance to the, the drop goal from Ricky Stewart? Yeah. Schofield across the back for Connolly. Of course, Goulding wearing the crucifix, if you like, after Old Trafford. But if your forwards are getting beaten, then it's very hard for your number seven to get on top, and uh, the two guys doing the co-commentary would know that. So I just think he was a little bit unlucky too, Goulding. He threw the intercept pass and sort of went into his shell after that, and, and not a lot of test experience. It, it was a tough initiation into that game for him. Anyway, it's with Fittler, and now it's with Clyde. Back row for Australia has given them tremendous impetus. Five metres short of the halfway line. Lazarus gets in the queue. And you see what I mean about Lazarus. He takes so much energy out of the defence in just having to stop him. I think he's had a tremendous tour. People tell me he's not the best trainer in the world, but I'll tell you what, he's had one hell of a tour over here. This is a chance that Great Britain were working for. Play by joint. Robinson is with it, pursued and put down by Walters and Stewart. There's a third in there, it's Roberts. That's the halfway line. Across for Edwards now, inside for Betts. Lazarus again, the tackler with Roberts. The front row, they make a lot of, uh, a lot of tackles. Jackson's run is good. There's an Australian hurt, I think it's... It's 
going to say, I think it's Roberts, in fact it is. Now Great Britain make the ball do the work with Joint going back and across. Clyde took a heavy knock. Harrison looking for ball support. This is the last. Seven in arrears, Schofield and Betts. Well, that gave Dennis Betts little or no chance. The turnover. There's little or no chance there for Gary Schofield. Both of the Great Britain centres have filed over to the far side of the field. A very short line compared to what they had to work with over this way. Sonny Nickel was the widest man inside the winger. And now that they've been caught out in defence because of exactly that. Clyde trying to get through and get the ball free. Australia actually built up numbers on the left. Renoff passes, Fittler chimes in, loving the number 13 job. Dean Pay is with it now. I think you've got to say this fella, this fella could win the money of the match again. He's had a tremendous tour, Bradley Fittler. He's, he's been well, probably, he's improved leaps and bounds. This has probably been the best tour of... Daly, Daly gets a beautiful pass from Stewart. He strides inside the 20. Laurie Daly, look at him go. And he's put down five out from the line. Meninga Judd goes into dummy half. Ball played slowly as it goes across for Stewart again. He tries to get in between them. Not held. Jackson dives on him. Five tackles gone for Australia now. And Stewart is out of the line. So it's with Fittler. He passes for Clyde. Inside oh, Renoff had a chance to shut it down. Well, I think when he looks at this video, Renoff, what will he be thinking about, Peter? Keep your eye on the football, son. This is the simplest of chances, and he puts it down. Yeah, I'm looking for an excuse there, Alex. Oh, maybe the headgear slipped down or something. He'll, he'll drop one of those in a season. You just don't want to make it in a, in a test decider. Well, he had a chance there to join an elite band of scoring a try in each of the three tests, and the band includes Ken Irvine, Mal Meninga, and guess who the third one is? A bloke called Sam Bacco. <laughs> you get long odds about that. I think we could have 50 to 1 about that last one. Well, the one thing that Great Britain do have to do now is to sort out their centre defence. Sonny Nickel on two or three occasions has been the man inside this winger, Jason Robinson, on this side of the field. Not tough for, for guys with the knowledge of, of Stewart and Daly to work that out. Edwards now using Chris Joint. Five tackles gone for Great Britain. They've done all right. They've got it down on the Australian 40-metre line, but that's a midfield bomb. That's a horror kick from Sean Edwards. Right back and away by Harrison. Over for Sonny Nickel. That's the turnover. Good work by Renoff. And I think you've got to say it's good work by Australia. There's no way they were going to go into that so it came for the ball. They knew he was going to get the hand over. And Bill Arrigan has caught uh, Sonny Nickel for a head-eye tackle. He's right. The crowd, the crowd really booing Bill Harrigan for that decision, but... The replay shows that it was smack across the mouth. Now, timeout. Funnily enough, the penalty was, was awarded for being inside the 10. It should have been. And I take it, bounced up off the ball. Renos, a little bit sick and sorry in back play. And Steve Walters now overrun by Glenn Lazarus. So Wishart comes in, centre field. Australia's look, looking to wrap up. 25 out, centre of the ground, 11-4 Australia. They had the chance when Renoff put it down just a few minutes ago. Will they get a similar opportunity? It's with Clyde. Clyde is about seven metres out from the Great Britain line, a back across through Stewart, and then for Daly. Daly's had a blinder today. Lazarus thought about a kick I do believe he's his confidence high yeah, drop goal now Walters Walters can he get it over he looks at the line then he goes for it he's got it he's got it Steve Walters good on you Stevie boy you deserve it oh, isn't that right and he's taken four defenders across the line with him in doing so he's just an incredible hooker forward is Steve Walters he is so strong Knows exactly when to run. It was quite early in the game because the defence was so strong, but once the gap started to appear, up the middle he went. You can see no marker defence at all. In fact, the one marker went the other side. 
Now, you can't score there. You've got Gary Conley and Gary Schofield holding you up. Andy Farrell should have come in and helped much earlier. So, too. Cattle Mole and 11 a hole. How did you get the ball down? Four players round him. How strong is this kid? Good try. I think Fatty with Crocodile Rock's a bit better than Alex with I'm a mole oh. in a little hole. I don't want either Fatty, come see. back. All is forgiven. Hey, great work here from... Gary Connolly's been strong today, but the spinning and the turning of Walters was the key factor in that try. He used the momentum of the tackler to bounce off and get closer to the line. And not a difficult conversion for Rod Wishart. And Bobby Gurling. He'll come on short. 15 points to four. Wishart slams it through the uprights. And Australia lead by 17 to four. And I think today you can also start getting the champagne now because I think that one's just about to won the act. Since the restart, a try scored by Stevie Walters, converted by Rod Wishart. And is the series Australia's now? Can we feel confident? I think we can, can't we? Look, 72 minutes gone. It would take a minor miracle. And there's Bobby to pull it out. He's finally out there, Ray. Came on for Chris Joint. Been a lucky ground for hookers. This ground four years ago, Benny Elias scored a try in the decider. Now Steve Walters has emulated that. And Mullins. Mullins. Good defence by Farrell and also Nickel. This is the last. Dean play. Oh, Stewart got a shocking kick. And now Daly slams it over the sideline. So the scrum will go down just inside the, the Great Britain 20 metre line. I think Etchenhausen looks very, very happy there, doesn't he? Just about saying, yep, yeah, out tonight. Good night on the town. We've just done the business. They're on a plane for France at 6.30 in the morning. What difference is that? Make, Manager right? Jeff Carr said, how am I going to get them on a 6.30 flight to France? Well, if it's PM, they're half a chance. So Bobby Goulding could be forgiven if he's tired of warming up. He has been for nearly 40 minutes. He wouldn't work this hard at training, Bobby Goulding. But he's out there now. He's probably in the unluckiest lad, really, not to be in the side. He's not at a bad tour, and he did not him on when he got no chance. Farrell. I know it's a huge statement, and I don't, for one moment, want to compare him with Phil Lowe, but the way he has styled his game, he's out wide, he's a big strider, a big man, and very fast, Farrell. That was what Phil Lowe was like back in the early 70s. Here's Great Britain now, but uh, it comes down to the green and gold. Well, how Daly ends up with that, I'll never know. Bobby Goulding nearly sliced through, and he had good support in, I think it was Betts on the outside. Mullins has found a little bit of space, a couple of high tackles, and gets a ball away somehow underneath. But Ran Goulding's first touch nearly straight through. Walters to dummy half. 17 to 4. And Stewart looks for his first test try. Gets it away. Dean Payne. Dean Payne scores. That's it. Australia yeah, retain the ashes. Ray, where did that come from? This oh, is from Ricky a Stewart. And Matt. That's a pass. This Paul Downing would have been proud of this. Look at this for a pass. This is one of the best try to score a try in a pass that I've ever seen in my life. A tremendous ball from Ricky Stewart. You've got to be a world-class player to do this. Just look at this. He still hasn't scored his first test try, but as we pointed out earlier, he's been involved in plenty. Ordinary defence there. Jackson didn't come up on... Or, I'm sorry, it was Harrison didn't come up with Gary Schofield. Flick there to Dean Pay, Supporting. And this is, it's a little bit of a shame for Great Britain because it's been a better contest than, this, than the scoreline now reflects. But just look at that for confidence. Oh, great ball. Where do you get that? There's only half-backs can do that. People keep telling me they don't win matches, but they certainly do. A little sense of deja vu here. Only thing is, the team with the green and gold are doing to the red, white and blue what this little fellow next to me did many years ago. A combination with David Bolton. Wishart converts. And Australia... Sweet sailing, 23 to 4. Now Alan Langer and David Fairley will get a taste of this decider. The quick restart falls apart. A staggered defence here from Great Britain. Nobody on the inside came up. And that's easy for Ricky Stewart. Oh, great ball. And Dean Pay, good support play from a back rower to be there. Glenn Lazarus has left the field. Steve Walters leaves the field. So Langer will go into the hooking role. I think also, I think Ricky Stewart will be buying the video, surely, with that pass. I think Dean Pay will probably shout several times for Ricky Stewart tonight. 
Stewart probably scored, could have scored his first test try, but he gave it to Dean Fay, who in fact scored his first try. Meninga must be a proud captain, even though that went wrong for him there. What an illustrious career and what a magnificent way to finish it off. And I think, Mal Meninga. I think the big man also, Ray, he's been under a lot of pressure on this tour. A lot of people saying he shouldn't have played in the test matches, but I think he's answered all his critics. He's had a great last two tests, surely. I think, as they make the announcement of the official man of the match, it's Steve Walters who's on the bench, as the picture showed. But I think, uh, Alex, there might have been some kind of a revolt or a riot amongst the players had, in fact, uh, the big fella not been on the run on side. Well, I'm not saying I would have left him out, but I'm just saying he got a lot of criticism over here, oh, unjustly sure. in my opinion, but uh, the guy has proved everybody wrong by saying, I'll do it when he matters. Schofield now, using Edwards, then the run round. Schofield running into trouble. And the Australian bench with Kevin Walters just two down the row from his brother. Kevin acting a sand boy today. And the pass comes loose. It's been battered back by Australia. And again, Jackson kicks it. Now he's uh, set play on. Six more tackles. And off he up. Working on the left flank. Six more again, says Bill Harrigan. 23 to 4. The clock showing 77 minutes gone. Australia weathered a magnificent fight back by the, the British side. But now they've wrapped it up, and Bradley Clyde is with it. Clyde, hard tackle by Powell. Robinson assists, and Clyde will play it nine metres away from the halfway line. Langer, Stewart, and then it's Fiddler. Fiddler's in the space. Mullins is with him. So is Dean Pay, and Pay shrugs off one defender before being pulled down on the Great Britain 40-metre line. And when the defence starts to get tired, it gets caught out in the middle of the ruck. The inside pass is now opening Great Britain up at will. Ricky Stewart, lovely slide of hand again. That one's thrown into Darrell Powell. Six again. I think this well, even when test matches, Peter, when teams are going a little bit tired, and especially with the class of Australia. Renault now, a beautiful pass by Daly. The pass has been overrun by Wishart. And this should bring a penalty. It does to Great Britain. Sonny Nickel falling on the ball. And then ushered across the sideline by Brad Clyde. So now young Jason Robinson is chaired off from the bottom of the screen. An ankle injury for Jason. It's been very much a case of the walking wounded for Ellery Hanley's team today. There's Jason back on the bench, Alan Hunt. He was an early casualty. Now Dennis Betts. In the last minute of the English leg of this tour, Jason Robinson picked up an injury late. It was a great start from Great Britain, that first test. Winning with 12 men after Sean Edwards' dismissal. Australia did hit back, and today's been, it's been a good decider. I don't think the scoreline necessarily reflects how dominant the Australians but whether they've been that dominant, they've certainly been the better side for much of this game. The opposition have never stopped trying. So Great Britain reduced to 12 men. He's used all his replacements. As the high bomb comes down out of the darkening sky, and the penalty goes to Great Britain. And I think you'll have a look at this, Ray. Just have a look at this for a little chap. This fella wanted the penalty as soon as the ball was kicked. It was a great kick by Dennis Betts, and have a look what Goulding does. No intention to play in the ball whatsoever. So, Bobby Goulding plays it now. The penalty going their way. And the side. The hooper in the background. Australia retains the ashes, which they've held for 21 years. And the drought continues for Great Britain. Mel Meninga will be coming up to receive the Ashes trophy very shortly. Laurie Daly, an outstanding performance. Steve Walters, the man of the match. And the Ashes trophy will be presented in an area just behind us, in fact, in just a few moments, Gershaw today by captaining Australia nine consecutive times. 
first player to make four kangaroo tours. First captain of two kangaroo sides. Most number of points in Anglo-Australian test matches. Broke Keith Holman's record for most number of tests against Great Britain. And there it is, the trophy held aloft by one of the great rugby league players. Surely he will join the previously instated or invested uh, immortals of the game. Well done. Congratulations now. So, a jubilant procession of kangaroos. Never have we been this close to a presentation. Well, Sterling and Murphy have, I guess, as players, but as commentators, we could, and I guess you might have seen us shaking hands with Mal, we can lean out and ask them, can we hold the trophy up? Do I that, actually Sterling. think that, that you've just done that, right? I'm sure that was your arm that held that, the trophy up. Well, done, okay. well, what a magic moment this is. Ken Arthurson watching the nine telecasts back in Australia. John McDonald, his deputy, as I said, a member of the presentation ceremony. Dean Pay scoring a try, his first in test football. And there it is, the John Smith Trophy. Tina Turner song in the background says it better than anybody, probably simply the best, and the Australians are world champions, there's no doubt about that. Chris Bombalus is down there with Laurie Daly. Yes, Chris? Laurie, describe the feeling for us. Oh, it's a very uh, touchy moment. All the guys uh, prepared very well for this test, and uh, oh, it's just a great feeling. Right? It's as good as anything going on. What about the big fella? He's doing an interview over there with the BBC. Uh, it, it's a great way for him to go out, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is, mate. Uh, he deserves everything he gets. Um, you know, he's just a great bloke and a great player, and uh, as I say, mate, he deserves everything he gets. What was the key to victory today? Oh, I think it was just our hungriness, mate. We uh, we defended them out on, on our line there in the early in the second half, and we, we didn't want them to cross, and uh, it was just you know, full of full of guts and full of. Uh, our determination. Congratulations, enjoy the moment. I know you'll party on tonight. Yeah, we certainly will, and I can't get by without saying good day to uh, Wendy, Andrew, Wendy's mum, and my mum and dad. Thanks, guys. Good on you, Laurie. Laurie talking there to Chris Bombalus, who we thank, and uh, there'll be more from him, I'm sure, in just a moment. Laurie, not forgetting his mum and dad back in the Riverina. Didn't have enough today. <laughs> Fabulous campaign finished. How does it feel now? Oh, I'm pretty relieved, Bombie. You know, it's a hard fought game today. With the score didn't indicate the real battle out there today. They played tremendously well, a lot of commitment, as did we. You know, we just hung in there. The defence was magnificent once again. That probably told them in the end of the day. Another eye on the, uh, another dot on the eye across on the tee for Mal Meninga's illustrious career. Yeah, I'm very pleased. I mean, it's been a great tour in squad. I mean, I, I really appreciate the guys effort through the whole tour. Unfortunately, seven had made the field today. Uh, the rest of the 11 and the, you know, the, the same staff, particularly Bobby Fulton, um, has been a marvellous tour and, and they end up in the right possible way. How important was it to you to finish uh, your stick here in Great Britain by holding aloft the Ashes Trophy? And everything, you know, everything as far as my playing days are concerned, we talked about it all week, you know, um, you know, if we didn't take that Ashes series home, this just tour would be a failure and uh, we've, no, we've, we've proven the English crowds and our, our own supporters and ourselves that we can I come over here and play on, on English soil and win the Ashes, and uh, I'm just very proud of all the, all the team. Thanks for a, uh, a fabulous career and some great moments. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, we endorse those remarks from Chris Bombalus, uh, interviewing there one of the immortals of rugby league as he heads off for the dressing rooms. Mal Meninga, 1979-19. goals. Andy Farrell kicked two to make up the four points for Great Britain. I think, Alex Murphy, that probably over the, the three-game series, the difference between the two sides has been shown that Australia scored ten tries to Great Britain's two, so they had an inability to get over the line. Well, I think the difference has been the class. When you have class players, you get them scoring a lot of tries. And in this side, every one of them is a class player. Like Bobby Fulton said, it was very difficult who to leave out. Now, our fella's not had that privilege. He's had a few problems. He's had three injuries with Jonathan Davis and one or two more going. And he's had big problems. But take nothing away from this Australian side. I think they've had a tremendous tour. They've entertained. And today, they've done what's necessary. They win matches and they do it well. Now, having said that, today we did get a real test match. 
Oh, yes. I mean, I think the score was uh, not flattering, but having said that, Great Britain competed. This fellow, Bradley Kide and Fittler and Laurie Daly, they've got to be three world-class players of the ice level. A little bit of bad luck, I suppose, for Great Britain in the first half, losing a couple of key players, Alan Hunt leaving, Phil Clark leaving. So their course wasn't helped there, but I was surprised and probably made it fairly obvious during the call that Goulding wasn't injected into the match earlier. Well, the kid's been a little bit unlucky, really. I thought he should have been in from the start. I thought that Gary Schofield should have been in from the start. But like I say, I don't pick the side. El Rianne picks it. And maybe he sees things different. But having said that, Bobby will get his chance. His time will come when he, we, next year in the World Cup. He'll be there, he's a great competitor, and I hope he just gets a big run. And from the Australians' point of view, the forwards again, very strong. The, the, the back row was great. You mentioned Brad Fittler a few times. It sounds like you've got a soft spot for Fittler. Well, I always appreciate great uh, loose forwards, and he's one of them. He's got a lot of football ability, he's got pace. He does a tremendous amount of work, and, and not only does he make tries, he scores tries. So for me, he'll be the next superstar of this generation. Well, at half-time it was 7-2, so it was a real ball game. The second half, the first try came from Rod Wishart. A tremendous break by Steve Wallace, who was the official man in the match. And in the end, the try was scored wide out by the Illawarra winger. Look at Steve Wallace! Beautiful side step and a swerve! He's away from the number nine, and he's pulled down about nine metres out from the line. And I think the little man really enjoyed that. He's having a tremendous game, Steve Walters. Stewart now! Players all round him. Daly floats it out. Wishart, Wishart, he'll score. Wishart gets it down. And Australia lead by 11 points to two. And it was almost a slow motion try there. Seventh, think, seventh think, test try in his career for Rod Wishart. 128 points for the tour. But I think you've got to win here. What is this the test decided? Is this the one? It's a very, very important ball out here. Wishart couldn't get in the first test. This guy's had a great tour. Stewart, the selective pass out wide. Now, this is where the Great Britain line is at fault. They had Chris Joint, who was back from the line. That forced the winger up. And Rod Wishart was able to come inside his man. <laughs> that made the score 11-2 in Australia's favour. Steve Walters got the next to make it 17-4. And the third try score in the second half, his first test career try, probably won't be his last, was Dean Pay, and he is now with Chris Bomblis in the Australian dressing sheds. Dean, uh, Ashes glory today. Uh, how does it feel? It's your first campaign uh, in the Ashes tour and uh, with the Australian side. Yeah, well, it's capped to just, just a great tour off for me. I've um, really enjoyed my footy over here, and um, today's just a pinnacle, mate. What about uh, that flick pass from Ricky Stewart? Yeah, well, I screwed my head off, so if he didn't give, give it to me in my room, he was going to cop something. We got home. Is that the secret that you two have been working out in your rooms uh, over seven weeks here in uh, Great Britain? Yeah, it's finally paid off, mate. <laughs> what about from here? What, what, what for Dean Pay? I mean, you've, you've started an Ashes campaign, back for Canterbury next year? Yeah, start all over again next year. We, um, as you know, we lost in the grand final, so we'll start again and, and just go from there, I suppose. What about, uh, does this help make up for the disappointment? I know you were shattered after the grand final. Yeah, well, you know, as, uh, as uh, the players, some players are going through, losing grand finals, it's, it's not a good feeling, but um, to, to uh, be involved in something like this is just unbelievable. What about Dean Pay? Can he put a cap on the celebrations tonight or uh, no problems? Oh, mate, she's looking out tonight. All right, there's a very happy Dean Pay. Thanks, Dulay. And rightly so. I have recollections of Dean Pay being on the... Well, it's uh, seven weeks of hard work. I mean, uh, we had our backs to the wall after the first game at Wembley, but uh, as a uh, true champion side we are, we've uh, turned it all around and come back and took out the Ashes. Didn't start in that first test, uh, played in the next two. Uh, obviously, uh, that was the turnaround for you, uh, the battle for the halfback spot. Oh, so it was a battle. It was a very hard battle, but... Uh, no one remembers the uh, two previous games. Everyone just remembers now the, uh, the win with the, uh, the Ashes. Everyone talks about the third test now. We were talking in the commentary that you haven't scored a, a test try as yet, but you set up one there for your roomie. Uh, you, you set that up uh, on purpose for him? Oh, yeah, I've got to try and look after the roomie. Um, yeah, I'm a bit embarrassed about um, uh, <laughs> I'm not scoring a try until i still got France to go. I'll, um, I'll tell you what, if I don't score one over there, no one else is going <laughs> to. What was the key today to victory then? I think our, I think our, um, our defence really showed out today that uh, you know, not letting them score a try was a, uh, a big effort and uh, purely goes down to our defence. I think the last words before we walked out before the game was uh, defence is going to win us the match. Our, uh, our attack just works off our defence. Despite losing that first test, were the Roos still confident they'd be going home with the trophy in the Ashes? Well, you got to play confidently, and I, um, on, on a personal uh, note, I was very confident because I thought we had the players to do it. 
I um, I just thought that the uh, the next two tests we just proved how uh, how much better of a side we were than uh, Great Britain. You know, they they threw a lot at us, especially in the second half there, uh, very early in the second half. Uh, you know, we with uh, we took all their uh, pressure and hung in there and come home the uh, champions. How do you back up against France? I mean, this was the pinnacle of the rugby league challenge. Yeah, well, you don't want to wreck a good tour by uh, being disappointing in France, so you take it out from there. Okay, congratulations and enjoy. Mate, I'll be, uh, I was a nice quiet fella until I uh, met up with Dean. He's taught me how to party, so I'll have a good night tonight. Oh, what? <laughs> well, I think he's a great player. Great players do great things, and he does. That pass was a magnificence. I mean, that, you know, like uh, if somebody said, watch this and do this, you'd tell any kid to do that. Only world-class players can do that, and he's one of them. Not only does he... He does a lot of work in defence, he's a great kicking game. I think if he run a little bit more with the ball, I think he'd be devastating. I think the longer the tour went to the combination, the Canberra combination of Stewart, Daly, Mullins coming in from fullback, Meninga outside bringing the fullback off his shoulder, that started to be more important as the series unfolded. Well, obviously, Bobby Fulton had a big problem. He had two world-class scrum halves to put in. It's very difficult, you know, when people are telling you, oh, put him in and put him in. He's got to get it right. The man was big enough to get it right for the second test. Stewart's gone better, Laurie Daly goes better. I think if he's around for the World Cup, we have got problems. Well, the one player I didn't mention, what, for you personally, what does it mean to uh, retain the Ashes? Oh, just a bit of relief, mate. More than anything, uh, lost the first one there, and uh, there's just more and more pressure each time we come over here now because the blokes before you have won the Ashes, so the blokes should be over in four years' time. We'll probably have a little bit more pressure again than what we've had this year. Consider yourself a chance in four years' time? Uh, I'll be 33 then, so uh, that'll probably be it for me, but, uh, you know, I, had, I was pretty lucky today. Things, things went my way out there, so I was more than happy if I don't get another chance now, that'll do me fine. On the scale of achievements, uh, of your own personal achievements, in rugby league, how does uh, how does this fit? All right, mate. Well, sit down, and have a couple of beers now, and have a bit of a think about it. Certainly, well up there, you know, it's it's always it's, it's, it's a sort of a flat feeling straight after the match. It's, it's as I said, I feel more relieved than anything else. But uh, we'll certainly have a think about that tomorrow. A slow start to the tour, but you've certainly finished like a train. Yeah, I'm reasonably happy with how I've gone. I've got a bit of a slow start. I had a couple of little problems there at the start, but uh, you know, the, the success of the tour just hinges on winning the Test series, and uh, fortunately for us, we've done that, so we can relax, relax now. Were the boys always confident despite losing that first? Test at Wembley? Yeah, you're always confident, you know, but it's so easy to lose. They've got a good side tonight. I think that the scores, you know, indicated the, the difference between the two sides, particularly in the last two games. You know, they've been in the, both games at different stages and we've managed to skip away a bit at the end and, and, and it sort of looks as if we've won more convincingly than what we did. Congratulations and enjoy the night ahead. Thanks very much and uh, thanks to everyone in Australia for all their support. Tough. Steve, the defensive effort from the Roos? Yeah, I think it was. I think when you start to look at it, I mean, if you can stop them from scoring and, you know, with the potential that we've got to be able to score points, I mean, we have averaged before today's game something like 30, 38 or 39 points per game. And, uh, you know, I think it's, a, you know, it's a set of credit to them, but, I mean, it all boils back to defence. And if you stop them scoring and you've got the ability to be able to score tries and, uh, you know, put plenty of pressure on them, well, you know, that's exactly what happened today. No Australians and nobody was really happy after the Wembley result. Were you always confident that the, the Ashes was, would still be bound back home? Yeah, but it would be nice to, to be able to sort of win the, the first couple and be going into this one cruising. But, I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's sport and that's rugby league and, uh, you know, the various things happen. So everything that happened in the first test was basically self-inflicted. And, uh, you know, it basically come back to ball control. It's a simple game, but the fact is that if you don't control the football, you've got no chance. It was Mal Meninga's uh, last game on British soil. Uh, a fitting exit for the big fella? Oh, what sort of a year has he had, huh? I mean, he's, uh, you know, state of origin. I mean, even though they didn't come up Trump's here, they came up Trump in the major competition in the bath on and off the field. And, I mean, he's a great player for, for these players to play with and there's plenty of players have learned from him and he'll be sorely missed, I can tell you that. Yeah, has, how much has he meant to Bobby Fulton? Well, it's a relationship, a, a coach-player relationship that I've very, very much enjoyed. I mean, uh, you know, we've had you know we've had um, our ups and downs as far as, uh, you know, winning and losing test matches go. I mean, uh, just about in every, every series that we've been involved in, it's always been a decider. But uh, we've always come up trumps and, uh, you know, we've, uh, Mel's done Australia proud and so has the teams that he's been involved with. Well, congratulations. Congratulations and thanks for some great football. Thanks, mate. Probably League Nation you know, in the world. But the Ashes Trophy won't be coming home for another two weeks. The Aussies have a full match tour of France to go. Chris Bombalas, National 9 News, Leeds.